Now we'll move it to X. Look in the middle, don't score. The roommates, bridge to Mormando. This episode is proudly sponsored by Beta Learning. If you are an education major or anyone considering a career in teaching, you won't want to miss this. Evative Learning is an innovative educational consulting company that is revolutionizing the way aspiring teachers prepare for their careers. As a proud sponsor of the Lax Lounge podcast and Cabrini Lacrosse, Evative is here to help you take your teaching aspirations to new heights. Evative offers a comprehensive one-on-one coaching program tailored specifically for those interested in entering the teaching profession. With Evative's coaching program, you'll receive personalized guidance and support to help you succeed in your career. They provide mock interviews, guided job searches, resume optimization, and much more. Their team of experienced educators and career coaches will equip you with the skills and knowledge needed to excel in the competitive world of teaching. One of the most incredible aspects of Evative's coaching program is their guarantee. Yes, you heard it right. They guarantee at least one job offer within the first three months of coaching. That's an amazing opportunity you don't want to miss. For just $250 per month, Evative guarantees that you will receive at least one job offer. Imagine the peace of mind knowing that your investment in coaching will lead to tangible results. It's an offer you can't afford to pass up. So whether you're a current education major, a recent graduate, or someone looking to make a career change into teaching, Evative Learning is here to support you and guide you in every step of the way. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to secure your job as a teacher. Visit their website at www.evative.com to learn more about their coaching program and how they can help you kickstart your teaching career. Once again, that is www.evative.com. Well, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? We're back here in the lounge. It's another Sunday. NFL football just wrapped up the 425 session. Hell it was yeah. a crazy day of football. Like we could probably get into that later. Barely probably. watched any. Well, there's some insane scores. The Dolphins put up 70 points today. But uh, this is a long intro. We're just going to get straight into it. We do have another guest here in a the wonderful lounge. guest, a wonderful one, Sir Kyle Katoa. What's Mr. going on, guys? Katoa. How are you, brother? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Glad yeah. to have you here. Thank you. I mean, thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, you know, sending that quick text. Uh, of course. Love to do this kind of stuff. Of course. Of course. Right before we started this, you said that we are uh, breaking your podcast virginity. <laughs> you are. You definitely are. Uh, first time. Again, I've always wanted to, you know, do a podcast and, you know, shoot the shit. But, uh, you know, I love it. I love listening to it. And I love, uh, you know, being involved. Yeah. It's definitely a different experience. Like, it's fun to listen to. I'm a huge podcast consumer. A big part of my take. I'm an AWL till I die. Um, but it, when you first get on there and like, I think ah, I had been interviewed for the first podcast that I was on. It was kind of like a fake one, whatever it was a school project. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It's really hard to like pick up. We were talking about this earlier, like the social small cues about when somebody should fill in dead air, how to fill dead air, like how to get stuff out when you don't know what to say. It's, it's a skill that, uh, that you have to develop and you have to work. on. Yeah. 100%. I mean, that's for anything. I mean, it's just going to take time and perfection and, you know, as things go on, you're going to get way better and better. And, you know, it just takes time like anything else. But, uh, you know, I think you guys are doing a, a killer job, you know, bringing this last dance and the, the lax lounge and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, kudos to you guys for, you know, doing that. So appreciate it. I Why will not? say you make this very easy on us. You have an amazing <laughs> voice. I very. can't get over it. Thank you. I mean, I'm trying my best, man. It just comes natural. <laughs> comes natural to them all right so like the past couple episodes we've had uh we start everything with the fast five all right five hit, quick questions hit me simple answers no more than a sentence here we go first okay. question Got favorite it. actor favorite actor Oof. probably the rock the rock Ooh. favorite sports team jets j-e-t-s jets good uh favorite movie uh it's the hardest one. Yeah, definitely the hardest one. I don't know if I have a specific movie, but the Fast and Furious series was... One through five is beautiful. Oh, uh, uh, Paul Walker, man. Rest in peace. But right. uh, what, what, what an actor. What an yeah, actor. Great series. Uh, hand scooped or soft serve ice cream? <sighs> hand scooped, I think. That's, that's I, the right answer. Yeah. That is the correct answer. Yeah, more variety. It's 100%. More variety. 100%. Last and not least, this is a big one for me. I used to ask kids this when uh-huh. I was playing soccer, mm-hmm. and it would really give me a, a good understanding of how they were. PlayStation or Xbox? <sighs> You know, that's a very controversial question. First of all, to bring that up is a very serious thing. <laughs> that's why I brought it up. To get uh, me in this debate is a little bit messed up, but yeah. I will answer. So, I know this is supposed to be a one-sentence answer, but I grew up playing PlayStation. I was a big PS2 guy, but as I got older, I turned into Xbox, and I've been Xbox ever since. Wow. Yeah. So, I'm guessing you went from PS2 to 360? So, yeah, I'm not going to date myself here, but I actually went from PS1. Shit. 
to PS2 to PSP. Oh, he brought up the PSP. <laughs> if y'all know what the PSP oh, is. I know the PSP. Oh, yeah. That was my thing. I love that thing. I, I brought that thing everywhere. Road trips, tournament, football game, whatever. I was rocking that That's what thing. it was made for. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. But I turned it over. I came to the Xbox world. Uh, just uh, a lot of my buddies in town were doing it, and I was like, might as well hop on the bandwagon. Yeah. You know? I mean, back in the day, you couldn't like you couldn't cross play. Right. So if you if you're all your boys had one thing, you right. got that. Right. That's, exactly. That's why I got PS4. And I think PS3, everybody rather. everybody had that phase where you either committed to the PlayStation or you switched over to because I started with the PS2 as well. Um, and we actually greatest thing of all time was my dad's truck it had like the movie player. Yeah. It was a fucking PS2 Ooh. in the back. So you could play Madden. Built you in? Could play, built in. You could just play games on road trips. It was amazing. That literally powered me through probably hours upon hours, maybe days worth of trips that we went driving. Oh, my God. Greatest thing of all time. And then I switched over to the Xbox 360 when I first got it. I want to say that was early elementary school when I yeah. got that thing. Yeah. And then Xbox One came out. Yeah. Got to get the Xbox One. Still don't have the Xbox One S no. or X, whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't really play video games much I don't, anymore. I don't, I don't really either. I kind of grew out of it. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of over it. I know a lot of guys like, like Call of Duty's out. Like, I got to go get it. But like, I, I don't know. I was kind of, I was that kid. Mm-hmm. I was big GTA kid. Mm-hmm. Big GTA kid. I, I rock GTA all day. But um, all about Madden and 2K. Yeah, I sports, dropped way, way too much money on this. Way, way more of a first-person shooter myself. Yeah, yeah. I love GTA though. I played GTA for hours on hours. You know, GTA was. I mean, I, I mean, I got. I was like level three hundred something, legit, legit. Like I saw all three hundred levels. But let me put it this way: I played GTA. Like all the new Call of Duties came out, and my boys were like, "Yeah, let's go play the new Call of Duty." I don't have it, dude. You know what I did? GTA? I, I rock GTA. I, I rock. Don't you wrong. talking GTA Five, Vice, like, Five, Five. Okay. So like, I guess when I got the 360, Five just came out, or okay. it was like pretty close around that area. Um, so I never played Four unless I was like on like the iPad or something like that. Yeah. But, like that was like not the same. But like I was rocking GTA Five forever, and then I think about a couple years into that, that's when the One came out, and that's when it was like you could download your profile, you didn't have to lose anything, and you were praying that everything came over because of not like you were yeah. like I gotta start over now I gotta do all my cars my apartments my businesses and stuff like that so um, no definitely definitely a throwback right there but now I'm definitely an OG uh, Xbox guy so that's actually you, exactly what happened to me yeah. is I switched from PS3 to PS4 I bought um, I rebought the game obviously because it wasn't you couldn't just like bring games mm-hmm. over and I had like 45 mil on my online account <sighs> and I wasn't able to transfer it oh that's very, the worst. Very rough. Legit or fake? Well, I'll say this. It wasn't legit. I'll say this. It wasn't legit. <laughs> I I didn't. So I went to this guy like invited me to his apartment, right? Like one of the you know, high rise sure, yeah, ones. Yeah. I get there. I hop into his garage and he hops into his car and all these money bags just start coming out of the back. That's awesome. And I'm just standing in the middle and I just see my number. I had like 100,000. I just see my number start rising by the millions. And I, I ended up with like 60 mil. And by the time like I ended up getting a PS4 and I stopped playing PS3, I had like like i said like 45 mil yeah so like, i mean i had some nice cars a nice apartment mm-hmm. like i was i was doing well in the game mm-hmm. fake mm-hmm. but like, yeah <laughs> i was doing well no for sure enjoyable yeah i mean, definitely with a lot of spending money like that yeah. when the new gta comes out are you gonna hop on that uh mm-hmm, maybe after school okay. but most definitely i will i will definitely probably be a part of that gang and stuff like that um but yeah i don't, I don't know when that comes out actually it's, it's I, think it's 20, I think it's 26 really yeah Maybe it might be twenty four. Actually, I forget. I know it's I feel 20, like it's, it's, it's soon. soon. I feel like it's it's soon. soon. I think it's next year, um, sometime next year, or something like that. I saw the map the other day, and it, it might be some bullshit that I saw, but the map. It's. I'm pretty sure it's every map they've had before. So, really? San Andreas, yeah, um, Vice, like, whatever. Yeah, that, I can't yeah. address them, but it's going to be one huge map. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why it's also taking so long. Yeah, if you true. think about it, like all the detail and everything they yeah. put into it, I understandable. Mean, but yeah. like, you imagine like flying a helicopter. Like, I mean, I remember GTA Five when you had to you know fly a plane from Lester's to the actual airport. It took forever, you know. And now, <laughs> now you got like triple the size. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god! Like you might as well just freaking go AFK and take a pilot or whatever yeah. like that. But then when you think about it, like Minecraft, that's that's like infinity. Yeah, like, true. It, it never ends. I'm so a big Minecraft guy. Massive, big Minecraft guy. Yeah, uh, not currently actually. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, last year, you know, the Hell House, we had a Minecraft like 
for about a month straight, we were just grinding Minecraft. Really? Like, Xbox? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't worry, that Wi-Fi was struggling. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, definitely, it was it was so much fun. And, you know, uh, you, you need get on those kicks, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're, you're like, oh, uh, you know, let's go do this, let's go do that, let's go do this. And, and, and you grind it for, like, a week, two weeks, three weeks, and then... And after that, you kind of get bored of it. When you're playing with the fellas, it's just so much better. Yeah. I, actually, I, I probably should pull up on my phone, but me and Raph, we probably played until, like, Coach Raph, sorry. <laughs> Coach, <laughs> Coach Raph. <laughs> if he probably's listened to this, he'll probably want, make me do push-ups on Tuesday. But um, me and Raph, we, we, we were up until, like, Raph. Yeah. <laughs> <Coach> Raph. <laughs> we're up until, like, 5 a.m., like, just grinding. I remember, because I started, the first time I saw Minecraft, it was at my buddy's house. Um, where like I'd go over before school and they they take me over whatever. He started playing. I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. I was like, this makes no sense. What is going on? Why this is not for me? Then I started playing it and I instantly hooked. Addicted. It addicted is an understatement. <laughs> so it was grinding it out on the Xbox would play online and that. Then I really went big balls. I went to PC. Mm. I bought the game online. Figured out how to do it on the on a computer, and that game is so much more fun on the PC. Really, especially when you're able to figure out how to mod it. That was another like peak point in yeah. elementary school, Jason Fridge, when I figured out how to mod Minecraft mm-hmm. and get all the like. Because obviously, like I'd watch people on YouTube and like watch yeah, all the tutorials. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Whatever. Yep. That was one of the greatest experiences. Yeah. Ever. And then COVID. We had a Minecraft kick happen again because it was one of the only things that we could do as a group. We'd just hop on Xbox into an Xbox Live party. And we'd yeah. go on a server and just like dick around for two hours after yeah. school. And it was great. I love those moments when Minecraft just comes back in your life and it takes over. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like the, the, the thought on the top of your head, like, all right, let me go to school. I'm going to practice Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. I'm not even going to eat tonight. I'm going to just Minecraft. No shower. Minecraft. I need the diamonds. Yeah, exactly. You ever, uh, you ever beat the game? Yes. I've never done it. Uh, not legit. Not legit. Uh, so, like, I've... I think we got a lot of fakers going on here. Fake money on the right side. Not really beating Minecraft legit. Because it's like, I never was able to do it, like, getting to the end mm. with, like, finding the end portal um, with the pearls. Yeah. I don't know how... I w- no, I would always buy... Or not buy, but I'd go into creative, yeah. build it myself, then go back into survival yeah. and try to figure out how to beat yeah. the other dragon. Yeah. Um, but no, I never did a legit. Oh, it's, it, it's uh, it's hard. Very. As, yeah, oh yeah, it's hard, really hard. But when you do it once, you start to pick up on it again. I, I probably could not recite how to do it off the top of my head, but you know, when I was young, I was bang, 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 boom, enter dragon, boom, done. You know uh-huh. what I mean? But uh, you know, those are the times. Those are the times where you can just have fun had no responsibilities and you know you did your thing and no i totally totally throwback that was that was a that was a deep comment right there yeah, i, I mean dude, minecraft <laughs> minecraft can go on for hours oh i remember God. the amount of times i got lost in the nether just thinking about that <laughs> yeah. like that's just vietnam flashbacks right there where <laughs> i did delete a world because i got lost in the nether and it was like well one of my best ones that i'd ever done i think might have been hardcore even um <laughs> this, is, this conversation is awesome from the get-go <laughs> anytime you get to talk about minecraft you with know the fellas i'd say you know we're going places yeah, I mean, that's like og stuff right there you know what i mean literally speaking of og let's start to kind of get into a little bit of the yeah, storytelling the, the real og yeah so tell, tell us a little bit about yourself would you grow up all that all that fun stuff yeah yeah totally uh so i grew up from north jersey specifically montville Again, it's pretty up there i'm on like the outskirts of new york that's kind of what i tell people and they're like oh that's cool you've been hoboken like yeah, of course, I've been to Hoboken, but it's not the outskirts. But I'm like on the, the, the more west of that, about 40 minutes west of that. Um, but yeah, I um, grew up pretty much playing outside in the yard all day long. My buddy Ben, Ben Torres, shout out to Ben Torres if, uh, you know, you probably listened down the road. But Better shout out, Ben. Yeah, he's a great kid, great kid. Uh, going to law school, pretty smart kid. Anyway, we'll move this on. But uh, uh, yeah, grew up with him. You know, wiffle ball was our stuff. You know, Torres Field, backyard, had a nice size backyard, wiffle ball in it. Um, then I got into football a little bit. Uh, and football was my number one sport. Uh, you know, again, lacrosse wasn't really, I was too young for it. So, But football was uh, my number one sport. I was actually ranked, uh, yeah, when I was like in middle school. But I dropped and I'll get that in a minute. But um, yeah. When did you start playing football? What age? <sighs> Great question. Was that uh, your first sport also? Yeah. Very, yeah. Very young. I mean, if you want to count bowling, but 
Yo, okay. Bowling counts. Bowling is a sport. Okay. So bowling was my first sport. <laughs> I don't know if Nick agrees with that. Uh, I, my cousin was a, was a collegiate bowler. <laughs> really? One, one of my favorite. It was a club, but yeah. All right, all right. One Good. of the best fun facts that uh, I have is my sister actually got third place in the state in bowling Touché. in high school. Wow. Damn. There was four people. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> just mark it up put it on the resume don't tell anybody i remember i think i went to school uh i was in like fourth grade and i told that to my teacher i was like yeah my sister went to state for bowling and like she got third place she's like he's like wow that's like really cool jason congratulations i'm like yeah there's four people <laughs> and he looks at me he's like only you would have a story like that like that is such a you thing like your family your situation only you could ever have that happen to you. That, that's like one of those icebreakers, like two truths and a lie. Like you say that, like, oh, my sister was a nationally ranked in bowling. <laughs> my dog's name is Fluffy and uh, I like playing, you know, track, you know, <laughs> running track. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, your sister was a bowler and that's the lie. And you're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's an ash. She was three but, of four. Yes. But still ranked. Shout there out to her. Go. Shout out to her. So you playing football? That started elementary school, I'm presuming, yeah, or was it before, like, probably you, like kindergarten still? Probably or? kindergarten, first grade, somewhere around that era. Started playing flag. Yeah, no, no flag. No flag. Straight to tackle. Right, straight to tackle. Wow. I, was, I was a reckless kid. Like, I rode bikes forever. Like that was my thing. Like I, I'd bike everywhere, and like I was such a klutz as a kid. Like I was falling off bikes, scraping knees. I was just reckless. Like I'd run into trees. I was that reckless. Like, <laughs> like, like when you hear like Fridge saying, "Like I'm gonna run through a brick wall." Yeah, was, um, I, I actually ran through the brick wall like, <laughs> like that. That's probably why More I'm, than that's in the mental state I'm at now. Like, that, <laughs> this is all coming together. Huh? But uh, yeah, I played football really young, and then I got into baseball. I mean, I played t-ball and grew up in that area, so I was just a, I was a baseball and football kid for ever. Uh, and then my buddy Tyler, you know, I, I, I like I was I was good at hitting people. That was my thing. Uh, I, I mean, I played every position on defense. I was always scattered around and. I was more of a running back when I played off, but um, again, I preferred to play defense. Pretty ironic how that ended up, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> yeah, my buddy Tyler's dad kind of, you know, put a stick in my hand and was like, "Hey, try this out. Let's let's go in the backyard real quick. You know, it's, it's called the cross. I don't know if you ever heard. Of let's it. start to rock around. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. So how old happened. were you when this happened? <sighs> fourth grade fourth grade okay. yeah yeah I, I was a youngin i was an early starter but thank god and i mean like again there's a, i don't know a lot of people that you know start later and very you know i know a kid named liam peabody he goes to manhattan started and he was a sophomore in high school i mean like crazy crazy athlete but uh yeah got kind of got into that I, I remember having a vivid memory of me like crawling on the floor like i was like my, my, my mom and dad were like you either got to pick baseball or it's lacrosse and you got to you know pick one and you got to stick with it because, you know, football was the fall, so I was good with that. And then in the spring, and I was an okay baseball player. I got, honestly, I couldn't hit for anything, but I was a pretty decent catcher, and I'm, I'm just kind of rocked with that. So I said, you know what? Screw it. Let, I'll try lacrosse out. Um, and my first stick, actually, fun fact, was a wooden stick. Really? I rocked a, a wooden stick when I was a yeah, yeah, it was a traditional. Not a traditional head, not traditional strings, just a traditional wooden shaft. It was heavy. Dude, those things are dangerous. Blaze the lumber. I think I had one for a while in, I want to say fourth grade, maybe fifth grade. And that thing, uh, my dad would warn me. He's like, you know, when you when you uh, hit someone, like when you slash someone, you don't really have to go full power because mm-hmm. you're going to leave an indent no oh, matter yeah. what. Oh, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're illegal. Uh, now I actually, used. I never got that talking to. And I was like an eighth grader using one just full really? force. Man. I think they're still good. I, I mean, I mean. Technology today is way better than a wooden shaft. Definitely not in college, but you don't think so? Again, I well, I I just I think the straight up just outlawed. I know in uh, international play you're allowed to use them, like the Haudenosaunee use them Mm, over the summer. Um, But I'm pretty sure, like in normal lacrosse, like college lacrosse, especially, you can't have a wooden stick. Yeah, college lacrosse makes sense. I mean, high school I played against a kid my sophomore year. He was a defender, had a six foot long wooden pole. Uh, It hurt. But I mean, I feel like youth club it wouldn't wouldn't be too big of a deal. Yeah, I can see how kids would get hurt. Yeah. but at the same time, it was more just like it's a not statement. An advantage. Yeah, it was like uh, the chrome heads. Like I vividly remember every player that had a chrome, whatever, if it was a fade or anything, just head. They were the best player on the field. Yeah, because they were the most drippy. Like they had the yeah. drip. So having a wooden shaft was like that statement of you know I'm not I'm not good enough to have a chrome head. Yeah, but I'm not just gonna use a metal shaft. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. on. Get on my level. I used to just cross-check kids with the wooden shaft, dude. 
Imagine I mean, snapping one of those. I broke like one a, over a kid's shoulder in like sixth grade. That thing's got to be loud, right? Like that's got to be a loud snap. It was like my only overhand shot I'd ever taken at that age because I only <laughs> used to shoot sidearm and I just used smack to? through it overhand. Yeah, I was going to say, I, think I, I, I don't know if used to is still kind of... No, I definitely shoot more overhand now. It, you like, do. You're probably was, one of the most higher percentage you know, overhand shooters on the team, I would say. I, I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah, like I, I basically outlawed shooting overhand as a kid and I would just shoot sidearm. And the one time I shot overhand, I was playing Ridley and it just snapped over this kid's shoulder. He cried forever that's and that and that's when you were like this is when i'm stopping shooting overhand yeah basically <laughs> I just, I just I i'm one stick done i'm never shooting overhand again <laughs> yeah, I'm done one and done why but do they tell you to shoot overhand if your sticks just break the lacrosse gods didn't like it yeah, yeah. no they didn't they didn't mess with you man mm. they didn't like it at all yeah it's interesting you bring up playing football early yeah. Um, because ironically, we were talking about this today at Team Ten when we were coaching. Because we're working with what was it, twenty thirty three, thirty threes, yeah, Young second games. and third graders. So, like second and third graders yeah. picking up the sport of lacrosse, and they're already like, I'd say ten times better than a lot of people when, yeah. like, when I first started. I mean, the organized lacrosse that we had was kind of a fucking joke. Yeah. So, like, seeing that, yeah. it's crazy. And we had the talk about like now that you can't start most football teams, they don't let you play until like third fourth grade like wow. later on and that's where lacrosse is starting to pick up yeah. earlier because you get that contact but it's nothing like crazy mm -hmm. um parents aren't like really worried about you know the whole concussion day or just like send your kids out there as rag dolls uh so it's, it's very interesting how that trend has completely flipped from our generation because yeah. even i remember like I never played growing up but there was kindergarten football like tackle football yeah and you know kids would Kind of late to lumber, which yeah. if you were, I assume, a linebacker, yeah, I'm going to say. I, I was a linebacker. That, that was kind of the main the main spot, but I, I kind of reached around it. It was funny because, again, I'm going to bring it back to Ben. We were the corners on Kokora. We used to call each other because that's the name of our street. <laughs> okay. And we live right down the street. So that was, a, that was a big thing for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I played nose guard for a little bit, linebacker. Really never touched safety at all. Um, I could see it was a D-end. Like I played a little bit of that. We kind of just scrambled around. I mean, again, you're – you're in like the bobblehead leagues, you know what I mean? Like you're just some little guy with a big helmet on, and you're running around with your head cut off. But uh, now that was uh, those were, those were the fun days, man. Those are those are really fun. Any career touchdowns? <sighs> do I have the stats? No. Do I have the film? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's actually funny you say that because um, I made all three of the guys last year sit for a half hour straight to watch my Pee Wee football highlights. And they were make they were just ripping into me. That's the stuff that you do at a college house. I think it was so actually. Matt, I was just gonna say Nestler, that, that, yeah, Nestler, no, high school local, football highlight. yeah, local North Jersey. Shout out Chatham. Shout, Shout out Chatham. 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 Yeah, okay. big did Chatham you play guy. against him in high school? I did. Really? I, yeah, yeah. So I started as a freshman um, at my high school, and he was a senior, uh, and we played him in states. Um, again, I didn't know who he was or what he was mm. about, but yeah, we, we definitely played against each other. That's hilarious. Yeah, I think we were watching. Uh, it was Nate's football highlights in Prof Dev because we were doing an assignment where, like, you look yourself up on the internet, see what comes up. Yeah, if you like it, whatever. His huddle pops up from like literally Pop Warner football, <laughs> and he he's shown me some of these plays where he's like, see that stud going up the sideline, <laughs> boom, just like zipping past. It's it's hilarious to look back on yeah. that stuff. Yeah, I was the same way. I was the same. I, I, I always make the joke like, all right, listen, look, there I am. Watch, 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 watch. Boom! There I go. <laughs> Sack. You know what I mean? You know, you just make it. You over exaggerate, and you, you, oh, you have to. I make mean, make it worthwhile. But now the, that, those, those are the are, memories. Those are the days. Oh, 100 percent. I wish that we had 100%. film from my freshman year playing football, because uh, at the end, I think it was our last game, and I was an offensive lineman. I was a center. Um, D tackle, and then they threw me in at linebacker for the last game. So it was kind of just like, yeah, for shits and gigs, why mm -hmm. not? Like, yeah. I think we we're getting pumped by some team. I'm sitting at middle linebacker, drop back into pass coverage. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just like, I'm playing Madden out there. I'm like, okay, I'm in the yellow zone right now. I'm going to try to track the cross, whatever. They do a cross route, and the quarterback throws the ball right at me, like literally <laughs> in my hands. I'm like, holy shit, I'm about to get an interception. I'm at like one play. I'm going to be the best linebacker of all time, most efficient. Go. I see the ball. It's in like slow motion. It's coming towards me. Oh, that's the worst. I'm, ju I'm jumping in front of it. No, it's, it's the best. I'm like, oh my uh, gosh, I've, I've seen this a million times. You know, it's just, <laughs> just catch the football, catch the football. Out of, this is going. out of left field. Our starting <laughs> linebacker comes out, fucking swats it right away from me. 
Knock, it knocks it away, pass broken up, boom, he's celebrating. I look at it, I'm like, you're a fucking, I didn't actually say that. Yeah. You're a fucking scumbag, you realize <laughs> now that. Now you're looking back at it. But like, that is my only opportunity ever, ever, that I will have to get an interception in a football game. And you just ruined it. Yeah. Like, I hope you lose sleep over this. <laughs> yeah, Because no. I will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone's like that. I mean, you want to be that stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I think there was no better feeling in elementary and middle school when you walked into school, cause you wore your, when you wore your jersey, you know what I mean? Oh, oh! You're wearing yours today. You have a game today. Yup. And guess who's playing? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> guess who's gonna be a starter? Me. Guess who's gonna lose my sixty? Also. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So that's a good gateway into middle school. So you yeah. talked about early on. You went to Montville. Were, were you always a, is that public school? I'm assuming. Were you always yeah. public growing yeah. up? Or? O- always public school guy. Always so public school guy. Was your elementary the same as your middle school? Because for me, it was. Like I know a couple neighboring districts. They yeah. had their multiple different elementaries. They all met at a, at a certain middle school, and then they would go to high school. I was a one through eight school. Okay. So what what was it like for you? Did you go to a different school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So elementary was K through five. Okay. Um, and you graduate. Yeah. Graduate fifth Actually, grade. that's not that weird because we were K through six. I think I think it just sounds different. But yeah. Continue. And then uh, it was sixth through eighth. Okay. In middle school, and then obviously you know nine through twelfth. Yeah. And but uh, it, it was definitely a weird transition. That was like uh, you know like we said going from that elementary to middle school. Like it's time to figure out like what deodorant is now. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I I still to this day can crack up over those health jokes and those health classes and stuff like that. Um, Did you ever have an iconic locker room moment? Like I remember my first oh, yeah. time going into the locker room where it's like you're with the eighth graders, yeah. you're a seventh grader, you're, you're like changing, you're like wait, so like he's gonna stand right there while I do it? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna watch me change. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about that, boss. I, I, I think I got a pretty funny one coming up here. So, <laughs> so all my life I wore tidy ways. Okay. All, all my life, I wore tiny ways. I <laughs> love those damn things. Um, but as you came into middle school, you started seeing kids with boxers. Yep. Of course. And you're like, hmm, I don't really know if I can. I don't know if I can wear those things or mess with those things. So then, what I did is I wore tidy whities on top, on bottom of boxers, so nobody would know. Wow. Mm-hmm. Play so of you, the you wore two pair of underwear. I did. Hey, how long did this go on? It's probably like two years. Two, two, year, two, two years. Two years. Yeah. Every day you're wearing yeah. two pair of underwear. No, I, when I had gym. You when know you had gym. Oh, okay. So like, uh, we had a rotating schedule. I don't know if you ever know, you know what that is, a rotating schedule. Uh, We had block schedule. Same kind okay. of thing. Like you had A, B, C, drop D, yeah. you know, E, F, G, drop whatever. You know what I mean? Like same thing. Um, we just did it by numbers. Day Very one, legit. day two, day three, four. Um, But like, again, you might have had, if, if it was block D, or sure, if it was block D or Block A, D drops. So if I had gym on D, I don't have that. That's where I rock the tutty whities all day. There oh. you go. You see what I'm thinking there? Being nice and sneaky. Did you ever have somebody who like kind of caught you? Where they're like, wait, are you are you wearing two pairs no, of underwear? No, I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've ever got caught. Maybe they just didn't say anything. Yeah. So this is the first awful. time like breaking news. Yeah. I, right now. I don't think I've ever told anybody this. Damn. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is an exclusive. Yeah, so for, for the we're gonna, we're gonna clip this and yeah. put this out. You should. <laughs> you should let everybody know. Let everybody know. But yeah. then, as eighth grade came, those bad boy compressions came on. Oh, mm. I remember compression days. Mm-hmm. First compressions, they were loose. <laughs> they were they were not the same technology they got today. But uh, no, I mean, just funny memories going back. But uh, <laughs> yeah, those double double box that were underwear or whatever you want to call them boxers. <laughs> Petty witties, whatever. Boxers, tidy whities, yeah. underwear, yeah. undergarments, yeah. whatever. You, you name it, it's it. But uh, yeah, that's I rocked that all through elementary school. But that's uh, iconic. Yeah, no, it's funny so, as heck. So you're in middle school at this point. Are you playing lacrosse? Or you yeah, playing? yeah. So I'll, again, I started in fourth grade. Okay. So um, again, I never dropped it. Never said, hey, I'm I'm going to come back to this one day. A, B, and Z. Uh, so once I kind of, you know, started in fourth grade, fifth grade is when I kind of started introducing the club. And um, that's when, like, also to kind of bring it back a little bit, like, we're kind of, I mean, me at least, uh, I was kind of like the first, second generation of, like, club ball. Really? Yeah, yeah, because club by me was not popular at all. Um, So, again, I started in fourth grade, club started to hit in fifth grade, started building up a little bit more confidence in sixth grade, you know, did my tournaments, travel. But there was only summer, I mean, yeah, there was only summer and fall, you know I mean? Now there's spring and winter and yada 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 but um you know national again later down the road but oh. 
Don't even get me started on national teams. <laughs> I have some very hot takes about that. I actually, I'm curious to know, but um, we can get that later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, I started taking lacrosse way more seriously, and I think it wasn't until like seventh grade I had to come to the dilemma again. Like, you know, lacrosse is an avenue where you can, you know, get into school and you know work it from there, and you know, kind of help you. Um, but I dropped for football early kind of saw the writing on the wall in terms of like my high school team was really not that good mm. i'm hoping nobody from my high school ever hears about this but they they know that they're not that good they, they should they, they, know. They, 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 know. they 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 should if they're not. mature they, they went know. like one in eight and two and seven and it was not that good so i saw the writing on the wall and i decided you know what i'm not gonna waste my time with that i'm gonna kind of stick to lacrosse and kind of you know introduce myself to the weight room as i got older um but yeah i dropped Baseball, bowling, <laughs> and football, and stuck just to lacrosse. Best bowling score, real fast. What is it? Ever, all time, ever. I think I, I, I think I preached the twos before. Wow. Nice. Um, can I go back there and go do it again? Absolutely not. No. Yeah. That that my prime time was when I was young, and that was it. There there was no holding back from there. But yeah, if I was to go to you know Devin Lands right over here around the corner and hit it back going again, oh uh, yeah, I, I I might break a hundred, might break a hundred, <laughs> but uh. Bowling was a good thing. Those those were good times. I had one of my best bowling scores at Devon Lanes when we were doing one of our team. Uh, I think it was either a call run thing or just we went there on our own. And I put up like a 160 or 170. Really? I could not Dude, you, stop you getting You beat started. me by like 15, I'm pretty sure. It was my best bowling I've ever done to. It was an insane game. Um because I, while my sister was doing her stint on the uh, bowling team, <laughs> I also kind of got into it. Like I did my uh, birthday party at a uh, the Thunderbird Lanes or whatever, <laughs> uh, and I would be the tryhard who had a brace because you know it keeps your arms straight. Yeah. You can get more uh, direct 100%. ball going toward the pins. Yeah, I was that guy, um, and it worked. I used to be a pretty big you spinner. Guy? Let me you just you make sure my brace ball? is on correctly. I'm yeah. not a two hand spin guy. I don't know how to do it, Nick. Does I'm pretty sure my, he does my cousin well. Jimmy, the one that played club okay. uh, in college, he he doesn't use the holes and he's just two hands. And I've seen him do a 300 on Wii multiple times. And like obviously in person, he's a good bowler, but like in Wii, he was the type of guy who would just like oh I'm up, look over at the screen, flick his wrist, get a strike, and then go back to the conversation. He was really? Having. He yeah, he was like insane. Wow. Yeah, he still goes to. I don't know if he still does. I know in the past couple years he has, but. Ever since he graduated in, I think it was like 2017 when he graduated yeah. from Temple, they go back, him and his buddies, they go to Vegas every year for a tournament. Wow. Yeah, and they, they have fun. I mean, wow. Yeah, that's that's fun. crazy. All for bowling. Um, so yeah. you're talking about like club ball and how you're in that first yeah. big generation. Yeah. So club ball wasn't like a big thing. Is that like a North Jersey specific? Like was it bigger <sighs> elsewhere? I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. I mean – like I remember, like those, like the the bigger teams, like Igloo and you know Primetime and you know like all those like big, you know ninety one, like those those were the those were the big ones that were that were around, you know when I was playing. But you know I mean now there's so many other ones. But um, yeah, at the time, no, like there was like three solid teams, and it was Building Blocks, it was Leading Edge, and it was Tri State, and those were like the three, you know, head honchos. And I was, you know, I mean like to be on one of those teams in the North Jersey region was like pretty tough. Um, so in fifth grade, I, I tried out and I made the, you know, the A team and I was on the A team for a very long time and, um, kind of not declined in play, but like, you know, a lot of people got bigger, faster, stronger than I did. You know, people just didn't hit me right away and kind of lost that spot for a little bit, um, just for a year. And I kind of used that year. I think that was my seventh to eighth grade year because I started hitting the weights. And that's when it was like, you know what I mean? That's when it was like that transition between getting middle school ball and high school ball. And, you know, I had started hitting weights uh, with, uh, with a trainer that uh, was New Jersey's strongest man. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool guy. Recently passed about a few years ago. His name was Joe Carini. Um, but uh, he trains like NFL players. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with like Tiki Barber, Ronnie Barber, um, Chris Snee. Yeah, heard the name before. Yeah. Like <laughs> a lot, a lot of big time giants. Decent. Um Yeah. Uh, he actually he trained Slay, I'm pretty sure, a little bit. Barry Slay. Wow. Back when he was on Detroit. Can, I, yeah. can you fact check that? I, is that right? He was on Detroit. He was yeah. on Detroit. Like in his rookie-ish years, like really early, right? It would make sense. Yeah, yeah he did a lot. A lot of guys. Clement, he, he was uh, he was a Viking for a little bit. I mean, we can look it up. I mean, uh, oh, who was that? It was the big guy. 
BJ Raji. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's for just boy. Well, yeah. it's, dude, I love, I'm a huge yeah, BJ, BJ Raji for a big, big guy. I'll never but, uh, forget that NFC Championship touchdown that he had uh, against the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Take big us, boy. Take us into the Super Bowl. That's a lot of beef. Yes. I not want to get in front and of I, that. We're not, we're not a big slander kind of people here, but <laughs> I just wanted to say we're watching the, uh, the, the Raiders and Steelers game right now, and the Raiders' owner is a weird-looking dude. Yes. Right? Really? Are you going to call him out for that? Yeah, he's a weird-looking I mean, dude. I don't he think knows. That's not a hot take. It's not. No. Really? No. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really stalking the owner and what he's looking like. Yeah, if you would have just saw the TV, you would agree. Oh, yeah. You would probably be like, dude, Waldo, are you like 6'5"? <laughs> uh, that was fucked. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Waldo straights. <laughs> yeah. Back, back to our, back to our top Mary man. Hand. So, talking about all this lacrosse, you, you now coach with BBL. Were, did you play BBL? I know you just talked about how you had the big three, obviously, but yeah, you did play BBL, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I played with BBL my whole entire life. Um, you know, in that... Going back to that timeline, I, I, I kind of tried out for other teams like Patriot and, again, Leading Edge and Tri-State and Steps, you know, as they got older and they got, you know, more, you know, recognized, let's say. Um, but now I'm stuck with BBL, you know, rode that pine out. Um, you know, once I got, you know, committed, uh, I became a coach over there. And I was a coach for them for about six to seven years. Again, I got to go back and think about it more. But – uh Recently, kind of, you know, never, never going to burn a bridge. I, I, I kind of found that out as, you know, you, you learn from these networking opportunities and stuff like that. Um, never burn a bridge um, because you just never know when you're going to need them on the backside of it. From relationships, family, whatever, it doesn't matter. Never burn a bridge. Um, so kind of softly, slowly, sorrowly, that's even a word, um, said my goodbyes and kind of just said like, you know, I'm going to kind of start something with a with an alumni um and he's trying to do his own thing and they were understandable of it but you know at the end of the day it's competition so when you were playing bbl did you have anyone on your team that was like a big name that now we'd look at and be like holy shit you got to play with them it's funny you say that because my i mean we had a lot of D, uh, division one commits um but uh, you know again a lot of division three commits but not a lot, not big names. I mean, big schools like Robert Morris, Navy. Um, I, again, we I keep going. Rutgers. I mean, we keep going on forever. Mm-hmm. But uh, actually, there was one kid that I played with. I don't know if you remember. His name is Ronnie Hickman. I don't know if you know. He was, you know, a really good athlete. So, you know, any good athlete that was in the club ball, you're in. You know? <laughs> like, coming from a coach, like, you know, you're an athlete, you're in. Yeah. Um, so Ronnie kind of faded away from the lacrosse aspect and continued his you – know, he was a really, really good football player. Um, went to Penn State or was – went to Penn State maybe or committed to play Penn State. I think he ended up in Ohio State. Yeah. Okay, yeah, decent. At, <laughs> at, at, as a safety and is now recently drafted for – um, and he's on the Browns. Wow. wow. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool journey. Really cool story. Really nice kid. Um, never remember anything bad about him. But, uh, yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's the starting safety for the, the Browns right now. Really? Holy cow. Yeah. Again, fact check me, but, I mean, he, he's a good athlete. That's yeah. awesome. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what about, like, coaches? Did you have big name coaches? Uh, yeah. Uh, Trevor Baptiste was my coach for a little while. Yeah. It's a pretty big name. Yeah. So, how did that – because he's – where is he from? He's not from around. So I don't know specifically where he's from from my area, but he went to Morristown Beard. Really? He's from, he's from Jersey? He is from Jersey. Why did I think he was just not from New Jersey at all? You know, I probably would have thought Denver. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I got Okay. That, See, that's literally the only place I would have thought he was from. Probably why. Yeah. 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 I went to Morristown Beard. Uh, broke a lot of records over there, obviously, because of his, you know, his name and his career and what he holds in the PLL now. But uh, yeah, he was, uh, he was my coach for a season or two, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah is this before he was the trevor baptiste or is this when he was trevor baptiste i think this is when he was trevor baptiste um this was like during his like main denver days wow um but his high school coach uh sal tremonda was the guy that kind of taught me how to play defense you know from footwork to stick work to you know everything um so kind of had that connection there with him and um I bet if I went up to him now, he probably had no idea who I am. <laughs> but if I showed him the picture, I got I got a picture in there stored. But uh, if I showed him the picture, he'd be like, "Oh my god, no way!" Where you know, how are you? Uh, but uh, 
but uh yeah no that was a real cool experience that's awesome was he the same like energetic guy on the sideline or when you knew him that like we see him around the pll with kids i mean not to my knowledge uh but just very knowledgeable of the mm-hmm. game obviously um but yeah no i i i, I so long ago um but no not not to my not to my memory not that i'm thinking of it but he's one of those guys where uh for the team that i coach for city side we do a summer camp every year and uh city side was founded by drew snyder chris o'doherty a bunch of pros so they bring in plo guys every year yeah and for the past two years i want to say trevor was supposed to be the guy to come work on face offs with us um and by wearing on face offs it's literally just like be there every kid wants to learn from them so they go over and pretend to be focused for the day uh but he got injured two years ago so justin ignacio ended up coming out from ohio state sure. and now he's on the archers he's on team canada um this year again he was supposed to come something happened so connor farrell ended up coming out uh Too cool yeah but the amazing thing about connor farrell is he was there for two hours, not even, maybe an hour and a half for a four-day camp where they promoted that he would be there like the entire time, one of the main coaches, mm-hmm. and literally just popped in. I think I said like 10 words to him, where I was like, yo, dude, so good to meet you, whatever. Mm-hmm. Comes in, does the face-offs with everybody because mm-hmm. they're like, oh my God, it's fucking Connor Farrell. <laughs> Grabs food, leaves. And I was like, what the fuck? We, <laughs> pay- we paid him to do that? Like, what am I getting paid here? Yeah. Um. But I, I really would love to yeah. kind of meet Baptiste and figure out what his energy is. Because Romar Dennis, yeah. he's uh, been with us the last two years at, cool. at camp. Very, very cool dude. Yeah. Laid back, relaxed. This same that's vibe. Like, that's like the last player vibe. You know what I mean? Literally. Like, I mean, there, there's different. You know, I mean, there's a there's an ass for every seat. But mm-hmm. uh, you know. I feel like the the majority of lacrosse players and hanging out with them is more that like relaxed vibe. It's just the community. Oh, yeah. oh you play lacrosse too? Yeah, okay, cool. We're boys. Yeah. I also yeah. love hearing like their college stories of like <laughs> yeah. what happened uh, in Loyola. I'm like, so what does a Loyola practice look like? And walk me through that. Um, or like, what was your craziest game day experience? Yeah. Like when we were talking with Kyle Wong, mm-hmm. I think that's just fascinating because it's a completely different perspective than what we see as Division Three athletes yeah. and what we see on TV, like on yeah. a Saturday. Yeah. It's like what goes into that? It's it's crazy stuff. So I always love uh, picking people's brains about that. Yeah, yeah. totally. No, for sure. Kind Definitely. of moving into high school now. So you said you started your freshman year. <sighs> yeah. Was uh was that like a role that had there was a gap like a senior graduate and you were able to fill in or did you kind of come in make a statement and competed to get that starting role? Yeah, uh, very very ironic situation. Honestly, I, I kind of came in here you know freshman year not really expecting much. Um, you know, you, you just kind of you know. I'm also very young for my grade. I don't know if anybody knows that. Um, so I was 14 coming into, you know, play and, you know, figure out that role and see what it was about. Um, but head coach, you know, texted me and said, hey, like, you know, come out, you know, try out for JV and just see how it goes. Um, you know what I mean? Like, just see how it goes. You know what I mean? Do your best. Have fun with it. You know what I mean? But uh, absolutely dominated that. Again, my, my, my high school is, uh, is a very 500 team. Um, but – Again, came into that, dominated, kind of had a, a situation with like a, a senior um, that was looking to play, that kind of expected to play, um, kind of, you know, fought that out um, and, and, and took a spot there, which was, uh, which I'm very grateful for because I think that, you know, coming from a coach's perspective now um, with the company I'm with, uh, you know, I mean, like a lot of these eighth graders going to play with these high schoolers. You can definitely see that that uh, that held back. I, I don't know the right word I'm trying to use right now, but like you can definitely see that like that stay back. That there's a gap. Yeah, yeah. You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell like he just played eighth grade ball, and those kids went to high school. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I'm definitely glad that I had that opportunity to do that because it only helped me in the long run. So beating out that senior defender, was he kind of tight about oh, that? Oh, yeah. There was a lot of controversy about that. Really? Yeah. Was it like a team-wide thing where it was kind of like, a, ooh, wow, I, I don't know about that? What, I guess what I mean to say by that is, was this senior defender, like, was he kind of a big name on the team where it's no. like, okay. No, not not really. Uh, we had two solid um, defensemen down there. Uh, one went to Weiner. Another one went to, I think, Weiner again to play football, though. Um, again, lacrosse football. So, 
Um, they kind of had that connection together. I think they roomed together and stuff like that. But the third spot was just kind of open. And, I, and it wasn't, like, guaranteed to him. Like, he still needed to prove what, you know, what was made of. Um, but kind of just had a lot of, you know, IQ towards, like, high school ball and stuff like that. And he really didn't. Um, so kind of jumped on that. And, I, you know, again, played it out. I think I, at the beginning of the season – uh, they had like five preseason games or something like that. And I jumped right onto the fourth. Yeah, I jumped right onto the fourth preseason game, started that out. And then, uh, yeah, I, I started every game since. What was your first high school game experience? <sighs> shitting bricks. <laughs> shitting <laughs> shitting bricks. Um, again, thoughts that were so long ago, but I think the ones that are fresh in my mind right now were, hey, I'm 14 and – Hey, they're 18. You know what I mean? That goes back to the fact of like that puberty level. Like, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot of, I mean, I had like the bare minimum strength, but like I wasn't as strong as them. I wasn't as big as them. I, I probably really wasn't that fast as them, but I knew that my IQ would kind of hold me down and kind of, you know, beat them, you know, with my IQ and intelligence more than just running out there with my head cut off. So, so at this point, you're only playing lacrosse, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Do, only do you lacrosse. think that helped you? More or less? Oh, 100% more. Um, and, I, and I'm a big advocate for, you know, having multi-sports. Uh, being a multi-sport athlete, uh, I think that's, you know, really good and keeps you in shape all year round. But when you're trying to be good at something, you got to be good at that something. Um, and, and if you could be good at, you know, a lot of things, that's great. But in my eyes, I kind of felt like, hey, I'm taking lacrosse to the next level. I want to get really good at this. Um, and that's how building blocks kind of helped me with that. And, um, you know, yeah, during that off season, it was just weights, 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 like Friday nights, weights, Saturday mornings, weights wow. all day long. Yeah. So kind of awesome. Yeah. hundred percent is awesome. So you talk about playing lacrosse, you know, that's obviously a passion. Did you love it immediately? Was it something that was, through trials and tribulations and it was like okay yeah maybe like i, I don't want to stop playing this like I, I do love this every time spring comes around i'm yeah. gonna play lacrosse yeah no god I, i'm gonna cut you off but i'm to answer that question right away uh yeah uh, i fell in love with it pretty quickly i i, I kind of found it as a distraction not That's a distraction in the sense that um you know I, I, would, I would lose all focus on everything else in life but it was a distraction that i can kind of just that's our ice machine. Ice maker. It's I was going to say, is somebody breaking in behind me? <laughs> I, got no, I got no vision behind me. I'm looking straight at you two, and I got a door on my 6 o'clock, and I have no idea what's going on. We're actually going to have Cole Snyder walk in real quick. He's, he's going back. Off. He's going to crash the party again. <laughs> he did that so many times. Not so many times, but like, like a twice. couple times. He'd walk in. What's up, guys? Just mid-podcast. We'd be like, hey, Ruby. He's like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Let me ask him the one though. What, what's his favorite? Um, um, ask him something. Animated character. Yeah. And he was like, oh, Shrek. And we're like, oh, great pick. That was our draft, um, which is probably a good time to remind you. Yeah, you're the one. You pick a draft topic. Ooh, we'll do that. Well, not yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Just kind of like you have time. Right. Start thinking of some okay. stuff. All right. Okay. Um. So yeah, as you were saying uh, before, Ice Maker scared, <laughs> scared just rudely you. interrupted yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. So I kind of used it more of the distraction in the sense of, you know, I I I just eliminated everything else that was going on, you know, socially and you know everything like that, and just kind of zoned in and said like, hey, I'm gonna have a you know hour and a half, two hour practice. Let's have fun for an hour and a half two hours and you know we're not worried about a thing because uh growing up i don't know i'll get a little personal here i kind of i have dyslexia really yeah yeah so i did not know that uh, yeah growing up was uh was kind of tough in the sense you kind of have to learn your own ways and stuff like that um but yeah that was a that was a huge factor for me because um you know everything that was taught was not you know registering as you know normal so um, you know, kind of had to learn my ways to lacrosse and, you know, kind of had to figure out, you know, what way worked for best for me. And kind of, I kind of came to that conclusion that like that short phrase method was, you know, perfect for me. Like, for example, when we do 3v3 bush pole, like, you know, if he's rolling away, he's bumping up something quick like that. Okay. Throwing down, you turn. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Again, I mean, we talked about that in practice like that, but I try to, the, the, I preach the small stuff. You know what I mean? Again, little things, little phrases, little stuff like that, because that helps me remember. 
So you kind of touched on it there, but did, it, did that ever impact you on the field 100%. and how you were able to process that? hundred percent. Was that like a youth ball thing where you kind of were trying to figure out those little ways, like you were saying, yeah. and then you finally got to the point where it's like, yeah. oh, it's an instinct? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think that a lot of repetition kind of came into factor too, of just doing the, the same thing over and over and over and over again. You know what I mean? Like break it down on a 45 degree angle, open up your hips, you know, stick in the lane, coming back inside, you know, helping back in the hole, like. Again, reps kind of help that out a lot, but, um, you know, came back to that small phrase again. You know what I mean? Do this, do that, do this, do that, done. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's just the kind of the way I worked and kind of the way I had to teach myself how to do things. When you were in high school playing club ball, was that a year-round thing? Were you doing fall, spring, summer, or just spring, summer? So as I got older, it was more of that. Uh, so in the fall, I do club. I would have my five tournaments or two practices a week. And then the winter, it would have it would be like more. We had ISP, an in, indoor sports pavilion, I used to call it, and used to have like a couple of like town teams now. So we had town, and we also had club in the same league, different um, brackets. Though. Okay, um, but yeah, that was that was a cool experience. So I got a lot of work in there too. And then rolling back into the spring, again we started in March. Usually that was kind of like March first was like lacrosse. Um, so again, that was another change coming into college, like. Starting January seventeenth, like let me say it again. Starting January seventeenth, you know, oh, I mean, yeah, like, it's a very for big change. Well, people don't understand, and uh, PJ Hewitt, he said it to me freshman year, and I'll never forget it. College lacrosse is a winter sport. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's one thousand percent. It's way more of a winter sport than it is a spring sport because you play way more in the winter than you do in the spring, and it's about even, I'd say. But you're cold for 70 percent of that season, and it's rough. Oh my gosh, it's awful. Especially like for me, I've never played in like obviously, you know, spring sport. You play in torrential downpours. You play, you play when it's like pretty cold out, like nice and windy and it's miserable. Great example would be yesterday's practice, which we'll probably touch on later, but that blew. Um, but my first time like at a Cabrini practice where it was January, there was snow walls around the field. Mm -hmm. I'm running up doing trannies and uh, like the wind's blowing in my face. The wind that doesn't exist on either throughout the field. Mm -hmm. Um, It's blowing in my face and I'm literally like, my eyes are watering to the point where I can't see straight. I'm just like, what is going on? I'm I'm living in a movie or I'm standing on the sideline uh, at the end of a practice and I'm like wiggling around my toes. I'm like, holy shit, my socks are frozen. Like I, I, that was the day I learned you have to double up on socks because <laughs> I'm sitting there and I swear to God, I came into the locker room, took off my cleat and I'm like, my fucking sock is frozen yeah. right now. <laughs> I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Um, so it, it's quite the adjustment. You hit the nail on the head. Like you go from starting and ending the season. Ours would be around March 1st. And then if you go through state, that's through Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. And then you turn around your freshman year of uh, college, you got fall ball, and then two months off, and then spring ball, mm-hmm. and it's what four or five months of yeah. grinding every single day mm-hmm. with with one day off a week. It's a lot. It's a lot. It is, and it, it, it's 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 being how committed you are. I mean, you gotta love what you do. I mean, it's like it's, it's for a career role too. It's I mean, like for example, like you guys, like you guys love doing this stuff. Like you guys already interviewed half the team. You gotta love what you do. You know what I mean, so you know, keep striving for it. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one big thing is, is yes, like, we do love what we're doing. Like, no one, every day someone's going to say something negative where it's like, oh, fuck, like, I don't want to practice today. Like, but you're, you're going to go out there and practice. Yeah. And you're going to, for two and a half hours, like you said earlier, it's a distraction. You're going to enjoy <laughs> yeah. it. You're going to be with your friends. Yeah. You're going to shoot the ball. You're going to hit a corner at least once. Yeah. Like, the small, touch on another thing, you said the small things. Yeah. I, I put it in one of my things earlier this year, in like one of my papers, but like the small things make me happy. Yeah. A bouncer that bounces perfectly into the top corner makes me happy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I throw in a perfect pass makes me happy. Yeah. And yeah, maybe it's 25 degrees with a, with a <laughs> negative 13 wind chill. Freezing your cone and, is Yeah, off. you yes. know, and it it's miserable and, you know, misery loves company, but mm-hmm. it's, it's so enjoyable when you look at all the small things. And I mean, even I like how you brought up the how the podcast kind of plays into this because I'm not gonna lie, there are points um, throughout today where I'm like, "Fuck, like, we gotta we get to record the podcast, yeah, but like then I have to fucking edit it, yeah, and you have to upload it, and yeah, content. It's like you know, it t- takes a lot of time, yeah, but 
in this moment before you brought that up i was literally in that like zen mode where it's like nothing matters like yeah. this is just freeing you're sitting down shooting the shit yeah talking into a microphone yeah. and then you made me realize where i'm like wow like this is kind of my escape yeah like or our second escape because yeah. we have practice yeah. and then we we're able to have this so it's like yeah. it's a really cool way oh wow big touchdown from the Steelers there um squirrel <laughs> Um, it, it's a really cool way to look at it as that escape from reality and a little like kind of decompression. Yeah. Also, we got a flag on the field here, and this could be really bad if this is coming back because the Steelers absolutely need points on the board this year because it's been a struggle. Yeah, yes. they're not playing too hot. Are you a Kenny Pickett believer? I'll take that as a no. no I'm not, not really. really like sold on no. it. No. So, it was on the defense. Okay, all right. And they declined it, rightfully so. Um, Thank we God. Should, we should get a fourth camera just pointed at the TV. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I just like flip over. It's like, so actually, this is what we're watching. Because right <laughs> yeah. now, this is, this is the definition of horrible podcasting because we're talking about something <laughs> that nobody else can see. Yeah. Even like on the video, nobody can see what we're looking at. That's okay. And it's yeah. great. Okay. If, it's if great. you guys want to look it up, just look up Kenny Pickett throwing a touchdown. Yeah. We also, go, we also acknowledge something. Why the heck is he using a glove on his throwing arm? I've never understood that. And he's what? always he's always done it. They, quest, they questioned it immediately when he came in. Like, yeah. Because wouldn't that like just have too much grip? Yeah. He has small hands. Yes, Ooh. actually. Whoa, I forgot about that. Because mm. that was a big thing when he was getting drafted. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He has small hands. That they were uh, they were questioning if he'd be able to make it. Ooh. Food for thought. Um, um, I'll, I'll reel this back in here a little bit. Because I know, I know we were trying to, we were talking about like, you know, having your own coping. And you were talking about podcasts. And, but I kind of found that out real early um, as, as a kid because I kind of used that like in the weight room. I kind of use that again, you know, also on the field. But with another thing I could have did was in the weight room. I mean, uh, I, you know, as soon as I stepped in there, phone was down, had a workout, didn't talk, didn't text. I mean, I, I also always was with my father. My father always came with me to, to work out. I mean, it was, it was his buddy at the end of the day, and, you know, they were always shut the shit and did their stuff. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I was just determined and, uh, you know, zoned down and did my thing. So was your dad always your workout partner? Oh, he still is. Really? Still is. Yeah. We, 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 during COVID, we kind of broke out the old. He used to have like a pretty big base, uh, pretty big gym in his basement, excuse me. And uh, he broke out some of the, the old equipment. Uh, yeah, we got about about 1,000 to about 1,500 pounds worth Damn. of weights yeah, wow. in, in the garage. And uh, yeah, no, we, we, we're always down there, you know, when I got time and, and when I'm not working and stuff like that. But yeah, we're, we're, we're still working out when he's around and i'm around we're, we're down there oh yeah that's always, there's always a magical thing when you get to work out with a partner yes because one it keeps you determined motiv- determined motivated um but also it's like Pushing a way to, you took the words right out of my Nailed mouth you knew it. exactly where i was always going. um because i would say like i would lift with uh one of my really good friends yeah. um pretty much every day we go over yeah. to his house and i mean we still do that to this day like the rubio gym is a staple <laughs> um and we would do that over quarantine and i think his mom said something to me this summer about like because all of us a bunch of our friends would come over to work out and yeah. it's like i was one of the consistent ones who would be there like pretty much every day i just drive down right um and they she made a comment to me where she's like it's always nice when uh when you show up because i know he's gonna get something done yeah. like with everyone else it's like he's gonna be there working and like a couple other guys are gonna be doing yeah. their own thing maybe like on their phone the entire time but it's like you two will get shit done yeah and i'm like thank you <laughs> <laughs> thanks for gassing me up a little bit there <laughs> um but so you fell in love with the weight room yeah was that did Early. that come from middle school and just keep getting getting built in high school yeah it kind of started in eighth grade so i guess at the end of it really um again it was that that factor when it came to lacrosse i again I'm, now that you, you guys are running my memory here i remember it was in seventh grade and we had a tournament up in long island and, and we played a team and i I was shit in the bed. It was bad. It was really? really bad. But it came to the conclusion that, you know, the weight room was kind of uh, a way that people were getting better, bigger, faster, stronger. And, you know, I was like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll get there sooner or later. But I remember walking off that field that day and I looked at my dad and I go, I think it's time to call Joe up. And, you know, I think it's, I think it's this, this, this is going to be the start of, you know, my weight room career. Wow. So yeah. You made the decision yourself. It wasn't yeah. like it, it wasn't like your dad was just like, "Yo, Kyle, let's, let's hit the gym." Uh, today. It, it, it was and wasn't. It was it was something that he's talked about a little bit. Like, hey, like you know, you're getting older now. Time to go to the gym. You know, trying to you know get you better. Trying to get this. Trying to get that. But I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get there. I'll get there when I want. You know, so I was just like, let's go to the field. Let's throw around. Let's have fun. Blah blah. blah. But uh, yeah, it, it it wasn't until I kind of came to you know I, I realized like 
I am getting sauced. Like, I, like these kids are just way bigger than me. And, and I, I put that into perspective. Like, okay, if I'm not going to grow, like if I can't control that, what I can control is, you know, the weights and what I do with that and the size that I put on. And, you know what I mean? And, and another memory that I'm coming back right now is I remember going on like a three to four month everyday bender of just straight weight room. And like this during the off season and we came into, they used to have like player development. They used to call it PVP, PDP, PVP, something like that. Anyway. Um, and I remember running on the field like full speed for the first time. And I was like, Whoa, I feel like a gazelle out here. Like I am moving. And, uh, you know, ever since that spark hit, um, it was kind of like, all right, you know, you look, I'm going to, I'm going to keep, keep doing what I'm doing here. Shit. That is one thing I wish I fell in love with earlier yeah. was the weight room. I got really introduced to it a little bit my freshman year, but when I transferred to uh, the school I ended up graduating from, because they had our strength and conditioning coaches, still one of the best in the Pacific Northwest. Like he gets awards all the time. He's just an amazing human being and really kind of installed that grit. And it was like, I was at an old boy school, mm-hmm. so you know the testosterone gets flowed and Heavy. It's, yeah, it's I wanna I wanna beat the shit out of you, yeah. like, no matter what it is. Yeah. If it's uh, bench press, if it's squat, yeah. if it's in basketball, like you just want to get better. And so that kind of like lit a fire under me, and I kind of like started to figure stuff out, yeah, um, and really like you know transform into the person I am now. Yeah. But I would have I, one regret I have is not having that like kind of. That, uh, that itch hit me on yeah. like in seventh grade because yeah. that would be a crucial time in my player development. Cause yeah. I like how you mentioned um, you kind of got shit on in a game in seventh grade yeah. and then you noticed the difference yeah. once you started putting in the work. 100%. I think it was – it had to be seventh grade where uh, I started playing select ball for this club team and we would do like pretty intense yeah. conditioning. I say intense, but it's like middle school. So yeah. uh, any sort of form of conditioning is intense. And yeah. we, we were doing this like you know two, three, four times a week. Yeah. I got into this like pickup tournament that I got asked to play in, uh, and I was running up the field. I was as a midi. That's that's how you know. It was just like mm-hmm. oh, we need guys like fucking throwing out there. And this, yeah. is, this is like husky fridge. This is not like me right now. Oh. This is you know one ninety two hundred pound fridge running Oof. up and down the field. So that's a man right there. And I remember I think I zoomed past somebody. Like I absolutely burned them going up the field on a clear, and whatever went down came off the field. And my dad's like, "Yo, you have to like tell Coach Cole." Um, shout out Cole Montgomery. He definitely doesn't listen to this. <laughs> Long pole Cole. Yeah, wow. Set him OG, over. OG memory right there. Um, but he was like, you got to go tell Coach Cole and like say thank you for all the conditioning because like you're flying around out there. I'm yeah. like, you know, I do kind of feel like a little bit faster. Yeah. I, I was never the guy to like run past someone. Yeah. I was usually like a bull dodger. And so that kind of was my first experience of like, well, when you put in the work, like kind of shows off yeah and then going into high school it was like whoa you put in the work yeah fucking shows off yeah um did you ever get burnt out in high school playing lacrosse especially like with the whole <laughs> recruiting thing because you had yeah. early recruiting yeah um i don't know how much i was, was gonna bring that up actually uh, uh, yeah uh, i don't know how, how, are you talking about like i, I could have been recruited in like eighth grade like that kind of early kind of, talking about? yeah so actually my year was the first year that wasn't a thing you were the uh, I was the cutoff. Really? Yeah. So the year before me, they 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 were getting recruited. Like I know a couple of the guys that were on that twenty eighteen team or like the class of you know, eighteen uh, for BBL, and they got recruited in like eighth and freshman year. But no, my was my year was the first year that uh, you had to be that junior and you know, wait until September, and then you can you know do the whole nine. I always forget that you were a twenty nineteen. Yeah. Year, Brad. I feel like you. When I first got to campus, I thought you were a fifth year because, like, <laughs> the way that you kind of carry yourself and, yeah. like, you know, you appreciate that. You, you've matured very well. Um, and uh, I remember the first time someone was like, "Yeah, he's a junior." I'm like, "No, the fuck, he's not. <laughs> he's not. He he's out of here. Not in like a good way, but yeah. like, yeah, next year he's gonna go get a get a big boy job, be <laughs> doing life things. Like three years later, now you are a fifth year. Yeah. Um, so that always that always throws me off. Yeah. But um, did you ever like have that kind of experience where you're playing so much lacrosse? Where you had to take a step back and be like, okay, realistically, I might need to calm down. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I ever had a thought, but I think I had a really good balance between. Again, I, I keep bringing it up, but between you know being on the field and training and doing all that stuff and being in the weight room, I think like you know having that good balance kind of you know led me to never really being burnt out in a sense, um, which was kind of uh, a good thing. 
so for you it was almost it was never everything's lacrosse right. it was you were you were able to individualize everything yeah okay. to where i'm gonna go hit the wall yeah I'm, now i'm gonna go, go shoot yeah now i'm gonna lift weights yeah not, not for lacrosse but for myself yeah like i never did it all in one day and i think again part of you know being the first second third whatever generation of it we only really had spring ball and winter i mean spring ball and fall ball that was it so you know i mean like during that winter section like stick work footwork indoor stuff like as much as you possibly can because it was a snowing but um yeah i never really felt that that burnt out um you know feeling that's really impressive that's it's very impressive yeah. yeah so i guess like that could be a good, good gateway into like your recruitment so i mean yeah. obviously we just talked about and touched on yeah. like the you cut off and all that i'm gonna cut you off a little bit here because i actually have a question for you too i would yeah. love to hear it so uh i know growing up i think you know, it was like, uh, you know, what are you doing? Like, how are you getting better? Speed and agility, doing this and that. Do you feel that growing up, I don't know if you ever did like a speed and agility class or anything like that. Do, do you feel that a speed and agility class was more beneficial or less beneficial than being in the weight room? Uh, I'll, I'll hit this one first. I, I really didn't hit weights until I got to high school. And even then I was pretty lackluster. Um, I definitely could have done more. Mm-hmm. Um, Still did it, but I definitely could have done more. I always found that simply running, doing like movements you'll do on the field mm-hmm. was way more beneficial than, all right, we're going to do a ladder drill where you jab step five times in each in each square. That never helped me. Mm-hmm. But, hey, here's a stick in my hand. We're going to do split dodges all the way down the field, right? Three-step split dodge. Mm-hmm. Do that a thousand times. Mm-hmm. You're going to be really fucking good at this split yeah. dodge. But doing it within with no defense, doing it on an inanimate object within a ladder, I never saw that make me better. And if anything, it, it almost made me overthink everything I did when I dodged. Mm-hmm. Where it's, oh, I have to have this many steps, this many stutters. Mm-hmm. I have to push my hips this way. And it would all compile and it wouldn't be natural. Mm-hmm. To where if I just, I'm going full speed, I understand I have to do one, two, three and move. And it was all natural Mm -hmm. and it wasn't i'm not overcomplicating it no yeah that's definitely interesting i know that i I think uh so i I also do you know private lessons for you know defense and stuff like that um no i will say sorry to cut you off i never played defense so i would say defensively 100 percent hey focus on your footwork yeah because yeah the guy's dodging on you but i was the dodger right so you happen to open your hips and drop step and hit yeah you know do all those things that never occur to me it was i have to beat you right so how can i beat you in the best fashion that i know well i was always a bigger kid i have bigger strides i can usually blot blow by you in one move right and shoot on the run right and that's what worked so right. yeah. yeah so yeah. i mean defensively i can 100 percent, and that's what i would recommend is mm-hmm. hey make sure you have the best footwork on the team yeah. because yeah your stick skills they might not be great but yeah. that could never that could never beat you yeah he beats everybody else but he never beats you yeah and I think my take on this would be more or less, instead of speed and agility, mechanics is the most important thing that you can teach at a young age. Mm-hmm. Because uh, kind of like what Nick was saying, like you can drill something down into yeah. someone's head about how to do a speed and agility ladder and like that stuff or doing cone side to side movement. But when I really started to have, I'm gonna, Coach P was our strength and conditioning coach, when he started having us do like mechanics on how to move efficiently, like driving your knee up and like translating that not just in a conditioning session, but in the weight room, like in between doing a squat, we're going to do this exercise because it's going to prime your hip flexor so that you're more stiff. Uh, stable when you're moving side to side or doing work to kind of build up your knees so that you don't have ACL problems. That stuff is the most important thing that I think that anyone can start working on as soon as possible, learning how to be the most efficient athlete in your movement and I would, make I would it to second nature. I would agree with that 100%. I like that. No, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a very, again, controversial thought that you know it was growing up because – I had buddies that never hit the weight rooms, but it was always with the speed and agility guy, and I was the opposite of that, and I was always in the weight room and never really touched like a speed and agility guy, and I felt like I was kind of way more advanced. Um, I'm going to put a pun in that because it's the name of the company that I'm part of, but <laughs> um, I just felt like it was way more advanced than anybody else because I, I, I kind of thought of it as if my muscles are growing stronger and this is going, you know, if I'm growing bigger, faster, stronger, then 
how can I lose to somebody that just has really nice, you know, form or something like that? Um, again, there's more topics into that speed and jilly area and I'm not all too familiar with it, but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for the weight room and, um, if I'm ever lost or ever missing an action, find me in a local gym and I'll probably be there. There you go. Have you ever thought about being a personal trainer? You said you do private lessons, but yeah. uh, is that a career path that you've kind of like, maybe a side hustle? You- you may- maybe. Uh, maybe. And I, I don't think it's that hard to do. Uh, I, I don't think schooling wise, it's that hard to do. I think it's, there's like a couple classes you can take easy on. to get certified. I think so, right? Um, but actually, shout out to our trainer, trainer Jess. Um, she recommended me a, a place um, last year that I thought about for a little bit. But kind of want to see where life takes us first before I start kind of heading in one direction. But um, yeah, personal training has, has been a thought on the back of my mind. Um, I don't know how much I would pursue it really. Uh, I know that it's really good money and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm seeing it through like doing pro private trainings and stuff like that. But um, when I'm getting to a point now, is time is precious. Um, and you know, I saw, I don't know, if, so I tell people I go home and work all the time. I, don't know, I probably said in the group chat, but I, I actually do go home on the weekends. Like I had to cancel all my privates today because of the rain and stuff like that. But I had seven privates lined up today and I had to cancel them all. And, you know what I mean? You got to make it worthwhile, but, um, to reel it back in. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big advocate for the weight room in terms of like, you know, you know, player performance. Yeah. And I, I feel like a big thing with the weight room that maybe, maybe you'll disagree. Maybe Fritz will disagree, but something that I've always thought of it's not necessarily you're not necessarily having to go in there to gain muscle every day mm. but retain muscle mm. right that that's always a big repetition thing. That's, that's right the hardest part. it's the hard it's the hardest part but to go in there and it's funny with, story. with the mindset of well i just did 125 yesterday i want to do 135 today mm. it's 10 pounds more but i want to do it when it's like great but why wouldn't you just get more reps at 125 and yeah. build and yeah, like you're going to retain that muscle, but you're going to slowly build it. You're yeah. not going to hurt yourself. You're going to slowly mm-hmm. build it. And then next week, you're going to hit 135. Yeah. We call that progressive overload. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. So uh, I, I was actually, it's funny you brought that up because I am I was kind of in that scenario. Um, so again, coming going from a gym that was more of a powerlifting gym, you know, being the world's strongest guy, I mean, strongest man, excuse me, uh, not the world's strongest man, it's being New Jersey's strongest guy, a man. I was saying I'm all scrambled like, right now. Um, you know, he, a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> he was more of like a, a one rep kind of guy. Um, like he wanted to see how, you know, if you can do, you know, 225 for one rep. You know what I mean, like, again, you're young. You, you're not, it's hard to do. Um, but as I got older um, and, you know, working really hard in the off season, I gained a lot of weight. And it wasn't fat. I, 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 I don't have a diet. I never really dieted diet did or went on a diet whatever english um i think both are correct yeah we'll say it is um but i gained a lot of muscle and i was really thick going into my junior year of high school and i could not move i mean you guys saw this year i mean i was getting flashbacks um again you guys know i I tore my acl um at the end of last year 2021 two two years ago two years had to be holy smokes that was two years ago time flies Anyway, um, and I gained a lot of muscle doing through you know physical therapy and doing you know gym on my own and stuff like that. So prior to tearing my CL of May of twenty one, last game, last minute, last quarter, um, I was about around that two oh five two ten mark, um, and, and that's kind of where I feel most agile when I play, and that's kind of where I am right now, but. You know, going through rehab and recovery and physical therapy and stuff like that, um, I was up to 237. Wow. And, I mean, you guys saw it when I was starting to run for the first time um, in March of this year. I remember it. Whoa. Oh, that was 22, maybe. This is 23. Anyway. But, yeah, I, I was uh, not in any athletic shape in terms of running because hey, you couldn't, but – you had to lose all that weight and um you know there's not really much you can do and that's the, that's kind of that struggle part of coming back really early and um you know trying to play i mean i came back significantly earlier than a normal acl injury um but yeah it was definitely a struggle to get back to where i wanted to be jesus 
So I guess uh, a little bit, I think we, we're going to go down the ru- uh, route of recruiting. Yeah, yeah how you, back to that. What's your, uh, how you got to Cabrini story? <sighs> how did I get to Cabrini? It's a great question. Um, I think it was back in the summer of either 17 or 18, I was at NXT Philly um, and doing their showcase like that. And Coach Garling at the time was the defensive coordinator at Cabrini and kind of reached out via email. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's give it a whirl. Uh, we'll see where it goes. You know, let's stay in contact. Um, I was also talking to another old Cabrini uh, coach. Um, God, let me think about this again. Nick Taylor. Haverford. He was, yeah, uh, he was, he's currently the Haverford, Haverford coach, but he was the head coach at Arcadia at the time. Um, so, I was kind of, you know, trying to expand my horizons, trying to see the areas that I like, the schools that I like. Um, really nice coach. Still, you know, thank you for the opportunity that you know he gave me, gave me the tour and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I was watching their game, uh, Arcadia versus Eastern at Eastern. Again, I was like a junior, senior maybe, maybe even younger than that. And my mom just kind of was like scrolling through her phone and was like, Oh, uh, you know, Cabrini's having a, a prospect day. And we're like, what the, where the heck is Cabrini? <laughs> She's like, oh, let me look it up. Literally, we find out it was across the street. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was, you know, we signed up for that because, you know, we were kind of in that realm of like, oh, we'll just give it a go, see where it takes us. Um, so fast forwarding a little bit more to that prospect day, um, the prospect day was on a Sunday. Saturday, I had a prospect day up in Siena. Um, so, did pretty well over there. Uh, liked the atmosphere. Went, again, really well. Came back. So I drove up four hours, drove back four hours to drive down to Philly the next morning for two hours to go to this uh, showcase. Not showcase, uh, prospect day. And that went really well. So, uh, I think what really sparked Coach Garling and Coach Cole at the time was I actually, I don't know if I fully broke it or I sprained it, but I, I put some lumber on his hands. And, uh, yeah, he, there was, like, the, their, their top prospect at the time or something like that. And, uh, yeah, they didn't take him because he had a broken hand because I broke it on the prospect day. What? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which, was, which was really crazy. And, uh, no, I just I got along with Coach, Coach Colf. Actually, you guys want to hear something? Love to. Which is really Coach cool. said that he's fragile. And they don't want him anymore. <laughs> That's crazy that you go to a prospect day where a kid who's like their priority recruit is there and you fucking destroy him so bad yeah. that he gets taken off their list. You ready for this? I am more than ready. This day is 7-2 of 18 from Coach Kolf. July 2nd. Yeah. I will not delete any of this. Um, I have another one for another coach and some other people, but I'll let you guys hear this out. Hold on. Hold on. Try it again. Oh, I have to have the speaker on. This is amazing. He's in the voicemails. No. Green University just catching up with you. Um, uh, we're kind of in a quiet period right now with no camps or tournaments this week. So, coaches are in the office just trying to catch up with some recruits. Um, so, hopefully, get a couple of days off. Not sure what you guys have left with BBL this summer. Um, but uh, we'd love to talk to you. Just kind of also see where you stand with the recruiting process. We know, as you know, we would love to have you in our 2019 class officially, and um, want to know what left, what was left to help you make that decision. Um, but give me a shout or shoot me a text. Let me know what a good time to catch up with. Um, what you is today potentially, um, and uh, I will talk to you later. Hope oh, all's well. See you then. Oh my gosh, he's a great salesman, but um, just hearing that <laughs> voice, I feel like I'm in a team meeting. Nah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, with all the, you know, at the end of the day, you, you, uh, just you got to thank him for the opportunity he gave me. Yeah, um, you know I mean, like, not a lot of people have this opportunity to play college mm-hmm. across, and you know, again, going back to work and stuff like that. There's a lot of kids that you know reach out to us and saying like, hey. You know, we're looking to do, I'm looking to see if I can get a private or, you know, could we do everything by sessions and packages anyway. Um, you know, it would be possible and, you know, you get to know somebody, you get to have the phone call and you get to know their background. It's like a, a junior in college and he wants to play college cross for the first time and you're like, buddy, it might be too late. You know what I mean? Like, 
but at the same time, like, you know what I mean? Don't want to ruin your dreams, but you know what I mean? Like you got to take for granted, you know, looking back at yourself, you got to take for granted for the opportunities that you're given. So, you know, coaching, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we got funny stories with coach and, you know, road trips and stuff like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, definitely uh, thank you for the opportunity. Exactly. You know, the one thing that we all can have to respect is that yeah. we would not be here without him. Yeah. Nope. No, 100%. We would not be in the Lax Lounge without Colts. No. Lax Lounge probably wouldn't, wouldn't meet anybody, wouldn't know anybody of you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know where life would have been. You know what I mean? Yeah, literally. You no. Know? It's crazy to think. Yeah. Uh, so you get to college, yeah. finally, freshman year. Actually, before we even get to college, your senior year of high school, the yeah. school that you're committed to go play at yeah. wins the national championship. Yeah, there What you goes go. through your head? Oh, uh, you know, it was a, definitely a crazy thought. I got to tell you, I, I thought it was uh, really cool um, as a senior going to a school that just won the national championship. You know, with people asking, like, like how's it going to be? What do you think it's going to be about? You know, you're excited, you're nervous, yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I'm kind of a, a really emotionless person in the moment of things. It really takes time for me to, you know, it hit me like, okay, this happened. Or, you know what I mean? Like junior year, tight game with Salisbury, lost, not initially upset, wait until everything, you know, deflates, then it hits me motherfucker we lost you know yeah. what i mean just the kind of the way i am I don't, I don't really like to just overly express things so initially i was very numb to the fact that you know won a national championship but it really didn't hit me until i stepped on campus and it was like wow a lot of these guys are coming back and they're gonna play um and what, what's kind of sucked the most was i kind of had a tease back in high school that i started freshman year and i kind of had that similar mindset of, hey, I'm going to start back my my college years. And I, I, I was definitely on the, you know, striving for it and pushing for it, but it was a very humble moment when that didn't happen. And, and, I, and looking back at it, I'm very grateful for that because it makes you want to push even harder. Mm-hmm. Um, like, again, an, another memory that pops up in my mind is, you know, freezing your cojones off at Ithaca, like oh. game one or two of the season, and you're just standing there. And you're like, Damn, I need to be on the field right now. <laughs> I need to be playing right now. So, you know, you, you kick into gear and, um, you know, you, you, just, you, strive for, you just strive for it. You know what I mean? If you want something, you're going to get something. But uh, then I know we're going to probably lean into something else here, but then COVID hits, of course. So that's exactly where I wanted to go. It's, it's exactly. What happened on from your perspective? Because was sure. that Ithaca game – that was the last one before the shutdown. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, if that's true. You guys ended on a loss. Yeah, yeah. I think it was that Ithaca game that that ended on that you know lost the the season. But it you know nobody ever heard of a pandemic or what. Oh, you had a COVID. There was a virus. You know what I mean, like when I was young, the um, uh, swine flu was a, was yeah, coming up, yeah. and that was like the big thing. Like, make sure nobody gets a swine flu. Like, it's gonna be bad. Like, H1 make sure you get vaccine. Like, and that's kind of the same mindset that I had going into COVID. Like, I was just like, all right, well, you know, it's gonna be a little ordeal here. Nothing, nothing really bad is gonna happen, and it, it just is what it is. But um, no, we it was March thirteenth or twelfth. That sounds about right. That's it was March twelfth. Um, I had a SAT. <laughs> that Saturday, as well as a play day, my junior year, never happened. Yeah, oh, I'm so pissed about that. I took the SAT probably well November of that year, and it was the last time that it was. Or now, because of COVID, you don't need to take the SAT at all. So I was pissed. Yeah. When like I put so much time into that, yeah. I got like a decent score, mm-hmm. and it's just worthless. Yeah. That no, it sucked. Like, yeah, I got into Cabrini. By the time I was going to take my third one, so I only took one, but it was like the third one I scheduled and they all got canceled. So I had that scheduled and I just got my uh, acceptance letter from Cabrini. And I remember opening it and my dad, like turning to my dad and be like, do I have to take my SAT tomorrow? And he was like, no, you got in. I was yeah. like, sweet. Yeah. I mean, especially for Cabrini, we're a test optional school. Yeah. And, or we're a we were. Op- yeah, we, we were. We're a test optional school. Um, and you really didn't need your SAT scores or ACT scores to get into here. And that's what kind of benefited me because my GPA was high when in high school. Mm. So rolling into school where they took your GPA and then 
obviously had a char whenever they did to find the calculation of getting, you know, you know, a scholarship and stuff like that. Um, part of the reason why I came to Cabrini as well, but, um, yeah, COVID was, uh, was, was, a, was a terrible time. And then that March 12th, you know, Cole, Cole fed us come in for a meeting and, you know, I mean, I start watering up, you know what I mean? You, you don't know what's going on. Um, and you kind of just like dab up all your boys and just say like, Hey, I, I don't know what's going on here, but I hope to see you soon. And it was definitely tough. It was, it was definitely a tough factor because you just didn't know. You, nobody had no idea about anything. Um, so we were all making the fact like, all right, see you in two weeks. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll, two weeks. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be back and uh, we'll, we'll get the ball rolling here. But for right now, the school's shutting down. Or the, the school is just going to be on lockdown. Foreshadowing. So March 13th, the next day. What are you foreshadowing? Over there? <laughs> the school's shutting down. Yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, well, yeah we're in that. Anyway, <laughs> um, we I got an email um, from the school, and they say that like, hey, the, you know, the school's closing. You know, what I mean, like we we need people to you know leave and stuff like that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not leaving. I'm having the time of my life here. I'm not fucking leaving. Yeah, I'm not fucking leaving. Yeah, don't look at me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I was like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> so a couple hours go by. Uh, I also have my car on campus. We can get back to that reason um, if you if you remember. So I have my car on campus, but uh, <laughs> my mom comes, calls me up about an hour later after the after that initial email. And is like, Kyle, like you need to pack up your stuff and come home. I'm like, Mom, I don't want to freaking come home. Like nobody's going anywhere. She's like, you have to come home. I'm like, frick, okay. Um, I read the email more and more and everyone needs to get out of the dorms and everyone off campus by 12 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> they love the like noon the next day. Oh yeah. They love it. Oh yeah. I remember Less when we got 24 hours, when we got back from Salisbury, our freshman year, we're living in the dorms and yeah. it's like extended stay, all that. Yeah. We get back and we assume like, Oh, we'll have a couple days to like, kind of chill out. Cause I mean, I booked my flight on the way back from Salisbury. And it was like four days. <laughs> in advance yeah um and we get the email like the next day hey everyone needs to be out by eight o'clock tonight i'm like what? yeah what yeah yeah excuse me and that's the same mindset that i had so i loaded everything in my car and my car it looks big on the outside it is not that big in there it is tight it is a tight car um so i packed everything up in there i think i left like a like some drawers a vacuum the garbage but i took everything clothes you know, school stuff, electronics, TV, Xbox, what you name it, it was in there. And I had the thing stuffed to the top. Nothing could fit. I was literally just shoving single items. I didn't even pack it. I was shoving single, like a tissue box <laughs> or like the paper towels. Or, you know what I mean? Like there was just zero room. Um, so, yeah, I packed all my stuff up like that day and uh, hit the road, came back home. Wow. Who was your roommate freshman year? Uh, a nice kid named Tyler Strong. Uh, uh, he was a good kid. Where you transfer? He dropped out. Oh. Um, but he was. Uh, I was actually. I was actually supposed to room with Sean Beers. Really, as my fir- as my first roommate. Um, and then I talked to Garling, and I was like, "Hey, like, I know Ty's from, um, you know, up, uh, you know, where I'm from. You know, like, would you mind us switching? Because in case we wanted to, you know, commute com- commute back home. Excuse me." It's like, yeah, no problem. Whatever it is, what it is. But, uh, yeah, Ty, uh, Ty dropped out. Uh, we had a little altercation, as you can say. Is yeah. that, he dropped out after freshman year? Fresh, uh, like, during freshman okay. year. During, or I guess after COVID, I guess you can say. Like, they didn't come back sophomore year. Gotcha. I got gotcha. you. I was, I was going to say, if he dropped out mid-year, like, yeah. you just had the room to yourself. I, yeah, I guess, like, mid-freshman year, but it was, like, COVID. I, anyway, um, so, yeah, that was that. And I, I had my own room for, like, a couple months. Which was really nice. That's always nice. Yeah, which was really spacious. Two closets, one bed. You know, I mean, I, I deflated the other bed. I, I, I had the setup. You had the setup. I had the setup. Did oh, we ever tell so you? Nice. Do we ever tell you about a uh, penthouse? No. You've had to have heard about penthouse. Maybe freshman year, Rut and uh, Thomas they got room together after Thomas missed the six a.m. He was late to it. Because he wasn't rooming with a lacrosse kid. Neither were. They Neither were. were. And Cole was like, you have to room with a lacrosse kid. So yeah. that way you're a cannibal. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he moved them into a triple, the two of them. 
At that point in Rutt's life, Rutt no longer wanted to live on campus, so he would just commute from home. Therefore, sh- therefore Thomas was living in a three-by by himself. Now, Rutt was there like in between classes and all that jazz. So the OC boys moved their shit in there. Hmm. Riggs moved his shit in there. Mason, who was my roommate, and, and uh, Xavier, he basically he didn't move his shit in there. But he, he, dude, there was there was like eight people in that place. So every day. living in that place, it was Not, it, like we said, it was a triple. So there's three beds in there. It's right. a turntable. And Just they moved. We brought a fourth bed from another room in there. We made a bunk bed. So now, when like when you hear <laughs> bunk beds, you think like, all right, like one no, one I sturdy can't. structure with no. two frames. Stacked. Brother, brother, we go to Cabrini. Yes. <laughs> They where used, where is there any structure oh, just wait, here? Just like wait. Schneider Brady, if you hear this, you can correct me for text. They used so I don't know if you remember, if you remember the bed frames that Cabrini has, but yep. it's the wood with the hole in it, right? Yeah, with the hooks. Yes. Yep. So what they did was they got pencils and they plugged the hole and then plugged the hole on top of the pencils, Boys. creating a little like you know thing in the middle. <laughs> I got like a nail almost. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was. And I think they duct taped a little bit around it for some extra support, but yeah, extra uh, support. I yeah. never, I never once climbed up on top, yeah, but like I, I, I saw, more beneficial for you. I saw Brady do it multiple times with the, with ease, and never like worry go through his mind. It was they, just like oh, it'll hold. They would sleep up there, like yeah. full blown. They, I would Root be terrified hand. of just like a gust of wind comes by at the wrong angle, and boom, you're on the ground. Oh, and it yeah. also, it wasn't like it was the dorms where it was like a twelve foot ceiling. They had like. 18 to 22 foot ceilings oh because they were the third oh, yeah. floor with the in east right yep. yes yep. a top floor was it like, third floor they okay. were third floor but Not where they were there was nobody above them oh, so they had like the entire like window wow it was crazy wow yeah. unbelievable yeah the presidential suite they call that literally what you guys call the penthouse penthouse because it was wow when you, when you look at the dorms and you see that that's a penthouse i think one memory that i had from east was obviously spring break we don't get no spring break. Nope. Yeah. We don't get no spring break. We get so, to go to Farmville, Virginia. Uh, well, we sometimes do, but sometimes we stayed home. And uh, yeah. so my freshman year, we stayed home. We didn't travel anywhere. We were on campus all, you know, mucking on our damn sandwiches at 12 o'clock in the classroom. Cold cold yummy. The cold cuts, man. Cold, cold cuts, man. Those Kirkland cold cuts. Uh, I swear to God, if we <clears> have cold, <throat> cold cuts God. for spring break this year. I might snap. I, I, Deluxe, I, I, the least thing you can do. Supplier <laughs> each day, each meal. Oh yeah, dude, our budgets are gonna be crazy this year, especially with like the. If like, I don't get no on, on Imagine that, right? We get off the bus. But, we we but, get off the bus in a strip mall, and Deluxe is like, "All right, just go wherever you but, want. We all go to a steakhouse." Yeah, <laughs> but put this in your brain. This could be your last cold cut. It could be my last cold cut. Well, oh, not ever, but yeah. at, at Cabrini. <laughs> yeah, at Cabrini. My my last Cabrini cold cut. C C C. It's actually art. I know how much you're gonna miss those things. A little bit. Oh, I probably will. Probably not. <laughs> no. It's as much as I'm gonna miss the same sandwich after every single game. Come on. And where, like, the, the Italian with mystery meat is not it. <laughs> Dude, I was it. turning into a Chick Fil A sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like leaving Tufts, where we came out, we saw the sandwiches, and I was like, oh, really? Mm. Our season just ended, and the the least that you could do is maybe get a local thing. Do, do you know what I did? What'd you do? Starved. <laughs> Didn't even touch it. I, I, I think I gave it away. I, I, I don't think I could have ate one more sandwich that year. <sighs> yeah, they, they definitely got excessive. Yeah, they did. They but the first one's always good. first one's great. First one's always amazing. Good. It's like, great. oh, shit, we got hoagies? Oh, I, I like hoagie. What about the sec- second time? Hoagie. Oh, mm, it's like, oh, shit, right. I, I had this yesterday. Dude, I remember this. Like, this is pretty gas. The 84th <laughs> time. Oh, fuck. Your you can't even it. look at them. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I, need, I know I need yes. to eat this, <laughs> yeah. but I don't want to. And I'm, yeah. the, I'm the guy that's like, all right, if I ordered an Italian the first time, I'm just going to get an Italian every time because yeah. I, don't, I don't like mayo. I don't know if it comes with mayo on it or yeah. other stuff. So I just get the Italian. And God, then, like I said, it has mystery mayo. meat. They put, the, they put the lettuce and tomatoes on the bottom, mm. which is like the worst way to make a sandwich. They're bottomings, not toppings. Yeah. So, mm. Bottomings. Yeah. So I guess we can get back on track with this. So <laughs> we just got past COVID. Your, oh, uh, your roommate drops out. Yeah. Well, before that, you were saying something about spring break. Uh, what you were doing. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. So again, we didn't go anywhere. So actually, I'm going to show you guys a video. I, dude, I, I got to tell you, I'm a, I'm a big video guy. Same. I think Don't I matter. know where this is going to. I got a videographer. Video. Hold on. You want me to be a videographer? Is that, is, you I, said you're, a, I said you're a big videographer. Uh, yeah, I dabble with it sometimes. I mean, I'll, I'll throw a video up here and there, but I'll, I'll give you the kind of the story as I go to find this. But we we found, or someone had, or some of the local, oh, 
shout out Rob Farrington. Farrington had mini lacrosse nets. Very. And we had, we put them upstairs in like the lounging area, no pun intended, the lounging area. And um, we went to work. 3v3. That's fire. Mini lacrosse, up and down, sweating like it was, I can't say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> but we were going to work and it was just a buttload of fun hold on i'm pulling up on it right now but um yeah what a, what a time oh here it is yeah you, here uh show the camera show the camera yeah show the camera all right i don't know if you know see that that's evan triz that might be pd that's ness right there oh uh, so it was like the full squad i don't know if you know cole uh, not cole uh shoot yeah there's G's right there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's amazing. What yeah. A squad. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see if I got all the shots. Yeah, Evan, Triz, G's, Ness, friggin' what a God. crew. Yeah, dude. It was fun <laughs> as heck. Wes, that's what I was saying. Wesson. Yeah. Yeah, man. It wow. was a. Uh, it was a time. That's the best part about living in the dorms. Like I'm kind of. True. As much as I love living off campus, mm. I love it. Yes. The dorms were nice. Freedom. There's, there's stuff that you just can't replicate I elsewhere. Know. Facts. You're, Shoving you're a bunch of fresh air. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Everybody's hanging out in each other's rooms. True. You're doing stupid yeah. shit, watching yeah. movies, playing video games. Yeah, we had like NHL tournaments, freaking Madden tournaments. We played a shit ton of 2K in my room. Really? That was probably the biggest game we played because it was me and Lenny. Right, me and Mace, and then our neighbors were baseball kids. Uh, so there's no lacrosse game. Yeah. I mean, there is, but it's it's that, shit. Yeah. No, no offense, Casey. Um, <laughs> but then like the show, the show is a fucking awesome yeah. game. Yeah. But when you play with baseball kids, you suck. That's a recent to the Xbox members, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I remember when that got uh, moved to Xbox. Mm -hmm. I got it right away, and I mm -hmm. loved it. Yeah. But yeah. then like we would, the game in between. Yeah. Is two K. I didn't have yeah. the, I didn't have Chell, so yeah. we would just play two K and. I mean, Mason was so good when we first got there. And then I just, like, we would play every day. And yeah. Repetition. You get good. Yeah. Uh, and the game started becoming even. We had Michael Forabante. Yo. Oh, oh Mikey. Wow. Mission Man. Back. Uh, he was gross. Yeah. It was fun times in the dorms. Yeah. Me and Y would rip 2K a uh, good amount. And then he got really big back in Fortnite mm. the second semester. Yeah, I wasn't big Fortnite. Bro, Lenny played all the time. I think it would be Wyatt, Dorian, and Clayto would always play because I had a late class <laughs> on a true. Yeah, I had a late class on a Tuesday, and I'd always come back, and he'd be right in front of the TV, and they'd be on FaceTime because we didn't have a mic headset. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> and Wyatt would just love fucking with Clayto. I gotta tell you though, you gotta have a mic when you play those. You gotta games. have a mic. It was I, that's like an essential. You can yeah. hear everything. Have the bushes creeping, people steps. jumping, breaking stuff, steps. I know, uh, I know, Riggs and Lenny. They uh, they still play the fort. Uh, whenever I, whenever fort. I go down to their apartment, they're always playing. Yeah, it. yeah. It's it's a good game. I think I think Epic Games ruined it, but uh, I mean, it's still a good yeah, game. I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah. Kind of with you on that. If, if it was always season three, then the game's perfect. Yeah, but early early no fort was it. Early fort was it exactly exactly before the whole like meteor thing where they started adding a storyline. Yeah, like, yeah. Why? It's like why? you don't a storyline. Yeah, it's your cartoon game where people kill each other yeah. with no blood. Yeah. It's battle a, royale it's a yeah yeah victory royale getting back to lacrosse um <laughs> tis the lounge well this is this is the best part about like doing these things um and kyle actually before we got on he was like yo if we ever go off on like a weird tangent like reel me back <laughs> yeah. in i'm like the better the more weird the tangent the better yeah because like these these stories playing Fortnite in the dorms doing fucking knee hockey during spring break like that's what we're here to talk about i just want to Go back to the beginning of this episode where we talked about Fortnite. We've we've talked about many video games. This yes, episode. it's all come full circle. Just, yeah, just, with that. just saying. You uh, said you weren't a gamer. I said I really not. I mean, don't get me wrong. My youth, I was. Those stumps had muscles on them. So yes, when I was younger, I was a big Xbox guy. But now, like, yeah, not right now. But I, I mean, I have one at home, but I don't think it played. I didn't touch it once. This summer. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't bring it home this summer. I left it here. I left mine here, but I was back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, local. Yeah, so I mean, as Virgil was saying, we're gonna get back to everything. Uh, so <laughs> we, just, we just got done with COVID. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we technically have been done with COVID, but in the storyline, you just got done with COVID at Cabrini. Yeah, you're coming back for your sophomore year. Yeah, what was it like with everything? You know, in the media, like COVID, it's it's real. People are dying. Yeah, right. Um, coming back on a campus, obviously, Colfer's the coach. Still, what was it? <laughs> What was the first week like? Did did you guys meet as a full team? 
no, uh, no, we didn't. I mean, I, I, th- I think it was we met, but it was outside, and it was all spread out. It was just six feet apart, and couldn't be by each other. Everyone had to wear a mask, thinking it was like a freaking airborne disease. But literally, we know at the time. But uh, no, I think I know. As we we came back, we had our meeting. We kind of had like a little like a one-on-one class of like what to expect and what is mandatory within the building and without the, like when you're on the field and parking lot and you know stuff like that but us crazy lacrosse guys i don't know is it week one week two had a little get together had a little party at the house hillcrest is probably only party of that year shout out henry moogs but he got me covid <laughs> Yeah, so you, so you were one of the original five. I was. It, I, it was it three or five. We talked about I this. I, honestly, I didn't know. I kept it low key. We talked about this in our uh, public relations class. <laughs> Jana Tidwell, shout out, oh, shout out, Jana. Three weeks university, you're saying? Yeah, I didn't let anybody know. So really, no. Okay, because Moog was the one. I didn't even let my parents know until it was done. Wow. How did so? How did you hide that? Like, well, I mean, considering that I'm two hours away from home and. They can't smell you or feel you <laughs> or through a FaceTime. So I guess more um, like from the school and like, were you in fall ball at that point? Um, so could you I just kind of go? It was just too early at that time. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's like the second week of school. Yeah, I think usually because we, again, a lot of the timelines are different throughout the years that I've been here. But I think during that one, we started from like end of September to like end of October. And our, our play day was like October – 27th 28th whatever it was uh that weekend like the last weekend and um yeah i just went through my normal activities and I, it was my sophomore year so um you know i had roommates i, I let them know i said but I, I you know just keep it down low actually i don't even know if i think i told them i think i just said like hey i'm feeling kind of ill but what really triggered it was i couldn't smell and i couldn't taste so you completely lost lost everything felt like dog crap like i was just down bad um but yeah, I, I think I was tasting. I had something. I don't know what it was, and I was like, "Hmm, it tastes kind of funny, it's a little weird, and a little interesting." But I was kind of congested, so I, I you know, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody uses Vicks here. I'm a little sucker for Vicks. Yeah, I put that thing on my whole body. I put that shit on everything. I put that shit on everything, <laughs> um, and I couldn't smell the Vicks. Oh wow! Yeah. So that's like so fascinating to me. The like mm-hmm. about COVID, how that works. Yeah. I can't fathom that. Yeah, which like you go to bite a orange yeah. and you just don't taste nothing. It. You go to smell a candle and you just don't smell. So it. I did another test, and where do you think I went to there? Take a guess. Where did you go to take yeah, the test? Well, yeah, no, like I took like a, a. I couldn't smell Vicks, so I had to go taste something. What do you think I went to go taste? Swiss cheese. No. Something like vinegar. No. Tequila. <laughs> and I go, I'm going to take a swig of this real quick. Let me see what it's about. Let me see if I feel anything. Straight water. Yep. What? Didn't taste a thing. I did the, same, I did the same thing with the uh, pineapple white claw. Yeah. I think it, I think they're disgusting. Mm-hmm. But drank to your it. point, yeah. I drank the entire thing. Yeah. And then I drank two more. And I was like, yo. And I was also in high school. So I yeah. should have brought that up. But <laughs> yeah, I, it was very, very similar. I mean, I didn't have the whole Vic situation. You were in high school, but you, you took this sip in, you know, Probably Jamaica, yeah. where, you know what I mean? Yeah. In, in Mexico. 100%. Did, yeah. Wait, mm-hmm. didn't you go across the border to Canada? And yeah. like, well, actually, it's 19 there. Anywhere that it's no, 17 like, years Jamaica, old, Jamaica's that's where 18 I was. Or 17? Because you were Something definitely like 18. Yeah, for sure. 100%. For sure. Yeah, yeah. My, wink, my junior year. Wink, wink, hint, hint for the people who are not watching. <laughs> I got it two days after Christmas. We had my entire family Ooh. over. I was working, and I was doing construction with my buddy Connor. I was on my way home. Same deal as you, like something felt a little bit weird. Right? Uh-huh. Got home, had a family dinner, sat down. My dad starts eating. He goes, Trace, I can't taste anything. Mm. And she looks around like a little bit like those concerned eyes at a mom. Yeah. Uh, she was like, can you guys taste anything? And I'm like, yeah, I don't taste shit either. And wow. So everyone did. My brother, he was fine. He had it, but he was he was fine. Yeah. He taste everything. My mom. So she, I'm, I'm the only one who hasn't had COVID. She, Ever? Never. Wow, that's nuts. Well, well I, okay, realistically, not, I, I mean, I've never tested positive for COVID. Yeah. Okay, there's been enough. times where I'm like, uh, yeah, I definitely might. I've have never tested was. positive for COVID. Really? I kn- so I couldn't taste it. So I think honestly, my dad I don't think had I've to get tested an, positive either. I just said I had COVID. Just, yeah. My dad had to get an emergency test the next day for work because uh, he works in the school district. Got it. Positive. Wow. My mom had to take one also because 
his wife. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Positive. Yeah. By the time that our test got shipped out to sent to us and then we shipped them out and got them back, I was negative. My brother was positive. Wow. So I never tested positive. Wow. I had my, what's that? The, uh, the blood drawn. Yeah. Yeah. I got that drawn for the antibodies. So yeah. I had them. Yeah. And the girl, she was like, yeah, you're spiked. Like you have so many. So it was like wow. fresh after. So I definitely had it, but I yeah. never, never tested positive. Wow. Well, actually, now that I think about it, because I'm a regular blood donor, I've never had the antibodies. So I've never had it. Huh. Holy cow. Which, like, my family was very lucky. None of us got it in the peak. Yeah. My parents, though, got it last, at the beginning of uh, this summer, where gotcha. I was on my way home. Um, or like school just ended, so I was doing the ESPN gig and was yeah. gonna head back. Yeah. And I got the text where they're like, "Yeah, we're in a quarantine right now. Your dad and I just both tested positive." Mm-hmm. And I hear that, and I'm like, "Cancel, fuck!" <laughs> like, am I gonna have to just call up one of my buddies and be like, "Yo, I have to live at your house for four days." Am I right? Uh, no. So this was that's Thanksgiving. I go uh, uh, to his house, but um, uh, this is luckily the quarantine window was like. I want to say a week and a half okay. now, like whatever the guidelines are. Okay. Uh, so it worked out. You just lost it. Yeah, I don't have a camera on. You just got kicked. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and figure out what just happened. And we're back. I love every time that we like go, not even for a break, but we have a technical gif- difficulty and we have to hit the <laughs> like, and we're back. Yeah. I was going to say, like, how, do you guys like take breaks during podcasts at all? Try not to. Okay. Um, whenever stuff like this happens yeah. we have to the first three episodes before we knew we could use a uh, uh actual cable to right. run power we were using batteries and batteries would die yeah every 30 every minutes. 30 yeah. minutes so it'd be a be to a point where editing obviously on his part got super hard yeah I bet. It, it was all right at a random time the mics would just disconnect oh, and okay. it was like okay guess we'll that that's kind of what i'm worried about i know i kind of talked about it when we were on pause a little bit but like I got wireless mics for work and stuff like that, and I'm afraid like if I run to, like the littlest thing, it ruins the damn video. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all right. Just you learn, you live and you learn. Yeah, exactly. So, so I forget exactly where we left left off. I know we were talking about COVID. Your, we're back. Your sophomore yes, year. sophomore year. Since we were talking about how we you got COVID from that party. Yes. <sighs> yeah, we that was a that was a smart move on our part. <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of. Like I said, got COVID, kind of kept it on the down low, didn't really tell anybody, kind of, you know, quarantined myself in the sense, um, you know, let my professors know I wasn't feeling that right, but I didn't tell them I had COVID at all. Um, so I was excused that way. But um, yeah, kind of quarantined myself. Again, we didn't have practice. So I said, you know, I was home all the time and, you know, just rolled into, you know, normal day activities and just didn't sweat the small, you know, just didn't sweat it. You know what I mean? Like I just kept my distance and did my thing. You and didn't let it ruin. You're, no. you're weak no. that you were affected. Oh, no. As you, I mean, for the people that live with me more, but like, I can't sit still. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know I mean? Like doing stuff and talking, communicating and stuff like that. Like I always need to be doing something, but like, so I just did my normal activities and did my thing. That's the thing that hit me hard during uh, quarantine was just like being away from everyone because I'm a huge extrovert. Mm-hmm. So like I need other people around me that aren't my mom, dad, and sister. Yeah. Where like I yeah. I just need to communicate with people, so I could not imagine if I actually got uh, the c word, good old COVID. Mm. I don't know how I would survive like two weeks where I physically cannot be around other people. Yeah. So during during the midst of COVID, my family had my I don't know if it was my mom or my I think my I think it was my mom that got it or my sister. I don't know, somebody got it. Um, and I was around them. I was living with them. I can't go anywhere else. You know what I mean, what am I going to my grandparents? Like that's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Um, aunts, uncles, like you just don't, don't, don't know. Yeah. Um, but I never got it then. Wow. Never, my first exposure, I never got it. And then again, we came to Cabrini and then I got it. And then again, I didn't tell, I didn't tell my parents right away, but months later I was like, Hey, by the way, I had COVID. Like, what? <laughs> hey, what do you mean? So what did you have any symptoms? Did you have, did you have a fever? Did you have any of that? I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, no, all I did was lost taste, smell, had a, you know, little chill, body chills, and that was it. Shit. But, no, uh, yeah, because my, my mom, I mean, my dad's my dad's pretty relaxed. My sister's pretty relaxed. My mom, she get frizzled over the little thing. Mm-hmm. I told my mom I wasn't feeling good right now. If I call her right now, I go, Mom, you're not feeling so hot. What do you need? What are you going to do? You got to go to the doctor? You got to come home? You want to you go to the <laughs> Are you dying? <laughs> Ra- rapid fire Total questions. mom mode. Literally. Yeah. So she's looking out for you. 
Yeah. So, I mean, after your sophomore year fall, hopping into the spring, how weird was it compared to every other season you've ever gone through? Because obviously, like, uh, yeah, the year before I mean, your freshman year, you had COVID. Yeah, but. yeah definitely weird. I'm, I'm going to reel it back a little bit to my sophomore year fall. Okay. I don't know if you ever, I don't know if you guys had experienced it, but we had to wear shields. Plastic shields. <sighs> yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Those things were miserable. So, initially, they were straight across your face. Like, like literally like a car windshield. Yeah. And as soon as you started breathing heavy and you started, you know, running around and getting hot and started to fog up. And you're... Your motherfucking thing. You're like mm, COVID, mm, whatever. Yeah. You're also in pods, so you can't. You go against the same competition all the time. And you get used to that, and it's not that it gets boring. It's just like you start to, you know, learn people's game. Um, then we were allowed to cut through our eyes. But you tell me, what athlete looks straight through the helmet all the time? None of Nobus. us. None of us. Eyes in the back of my head, always. I had the same issue my senior year. So I cut it a little bit more. I'd be a little rebel. <laughs> I said, screw it. Do a little bit more. So now I'm down. So first bar was covered at first. I mean, was cut off. Then the second bar was covered. I went down halfway to the third. But guess what? Still, you need your peripheral vision to play lacrosse. Mm-hmm. Head on a swivel all the time. Of course. I cut it a little bit more. So I was barely using nothing at one point. Like barely nothing. It was just on the helmet. But I, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we had to wear masks, too. I think. So I was going to say, like, yeah, my I, fall. You guys are making me think. This is senior year of high school. We, at our practices, they made us wear masks. Yeah. Um, Even, like, just for captain's practices. Yeah. Like, we had, yeah, I that. think it was a parent would sit there and make sure that everyone had their mask on. Yeah. And when that thing, when it rains and you have a mask on, you're trying to breathe and you suck in. And yeah. You, eating a mask just just sick like sucking on your sweat through your chin yes like, as yeah. you're, like i think we we're doing uh conditioning mm. when it really like it, it just got so bad yeah. to where i just fuck i ripped my helmet off took off the mask and i'm like i'm not doing this yeah, breathing heavy like it's like do you want me to pass out on this field because yes. i can't breathe mm-hmm. or do you want me to not get covid well i mean just in the, i think part of that was just nobody knew at the time yeah you know i mean and it's, it's it's understandable looking back at it but like in the moment an athlete a collegiate athlete have to go through this and try to work through the kinks, especially with a kid that had asthma. You have a- uh, yes, you do. Yeah. Tough. Tough. That. Real tough. Um, it's a little bit, it's better now. So like, I don't really have that big of a hard time, but uh, yeah, during, during that, you know what I mean? You're, it's tough. Cause asthma was like one of the, the triggers. Like you had mm-hmm. asthma. You, I mean, you were going to look an automatic respirator or the, Wait, respirator? Ventilator. Yeah, I think it was a respirator. Ventilator. Oh, ventilator. Ventilator. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It basically did the same thing. Though. It was like it was like an iron lung. Yeah. Yes. Throwback. Yes. Throwback. Big, big, big polio throwback. days. Yeah. yeah. Way, big fan of the polio. Way back when. <laughs> um, so going into, and I guess we can probably like try to sum this up quick because that was just a weird year. Yeah. The whole general. Was, the whole thing was weird. Like oh. for you, for us. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my high school season was wild. Yeah. Um, but like in. In one word, what would you use to describe the 2021 season, that COVID season? Um, one word. I mean, I think it would just be confused. I mean, throughout the whole thing. Uh, I mean, confused of not understanding anything about COVID or anything like that. Having an awkward season, whether you're going to play a team or not play a team. Whether you're going to play your conference once, twice, three times. Travel. There was just a lot of questions. And a lot of questions that nobody could answer. And that was just kind of a problem for all of us because we just didn't know what to do. And, um, you know, I mean, like, it, it just it just stuck. I mean, like, when you have a problem and you can't find a solution to it, that was it to the T. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it all worked out at the end of the day. I mean, we're still here. We're still playing. We're still doing our thing. We're still on our last dance. But, uh, yeah, just by confusion would be another word. And then now we get into the picture. Yeah. Our freshman year, 2022. My junior year? So, yes. That'd be your Jeez. first full season yeah. of normal college oh, lacrosse. Well, actually, we can, we can bring this back a little bit more. Even more. End of my sophomore year. You know what I mean? Where you, you play your conference. You play Salisbury. We played UPenn. That's right. <sighs> okay. Tell me about the UPenn game because I remember vividly. So, yeah. We, I played UPenn my freshman year. We won that. 
Ice machine, baby. Shout out to the ice Hell machine. Yeah. She, hey, she wants to hear Two about appearances. you. You got like a like Ice Spice. What's like we got a nickname for her? Like, Ooh, we got to get on that. I mean, yeah. she's chatty. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She is chatty. She's, she's chatty. She's always right. active. Yeah. We have Ew. some good conversations. Yeah. Um, so UPenn. So, yeah, we played UPenn our, our freshman year. Uh, again, didn't have any of that exposure, didn't play. Um, but played in my sophomore year, quote, unquote, sophomore year. Um, and that was a real good old ass whooping. Uh, and that was, you know, playing with Coach Luca, which was, you know, pretty cool now in hindsight. Um, but that was uh, that was like a moment. To us, because I always knew Cabrini that smoking teams. You know what I mean? You played Eastern, twenty nine three. You know, what I mean, you play our conference. We knew what our conference level is, but smoking them twenty nine one. You know, you play a good team like the Lynchburgs. You know, my freshman year we beat Lynchburg. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That and was Dickinson a, and Dickinson. And um, again, impressive. We come to play UPenn. You know what I mean? Like beat them last year. Coming into our home field this year. Good old Edith Rob. Love that place. Turf sucks. Anyway, <laughs> um, good old ass whooping. I mean, we were at halftime, and I think it was like 6 4, 6 5, close. And all of a sudden, at the end of that, it just started to trail away little by little, little by little, little by little. And, you know, we've all been into games like that. You know I mean, just uh, the ones that you just don't want to be on that side of the scoreboard. Mm-hmm. And they suck. And you get off the field, and you're just like, we're still Cabrini and lacrosse. You know what I mean? But it's the fact that you got to put that in the dumpster and keep moving forward, right? It's not how hard you can get hit. What's the quote? Rocky. It's not, it's not bad how hard you can get hit. It's bad, hard, bad how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Yeah, shout out to that, right? And, you know, you, you, you kind of take those words and, you, you know, you, you keep moving forward in that. Um, but what a great experience. You know I mean? Playing with those, those top-notch athletes that are – I mean, I got to say, probably half of them are in freaking BLL now, at mm-hmm. least, um, which is pretty cool um, in hindsight. So, was there any, like, really big – I heard that one of them was a big trash talker. I, I, honestly, you're bringing me back four years – three years ago now, three years ago. Um, Don't mean to age you like that. I know. <laughs> Frig, man. I'm, I'm in the grandpa department now. Um, do I have any trash talkers? Because I think – I remember hearing a story of their one attack and, like, the entire second half was just – was chirping Colf, really? like was riding Colf up and down the sideline. So, yeah, um, I was not not to. I hate bragging is not one of my thing, but I wasn't over there, so I don't know. Um, that's actually a very good flex, though. <laughs> I, I wasn't over there, so I don't know. But um, I, I, I mean, we were pretty cool on our side. I mean, when you get smacked like that, you just got to be as humble as possible, and you just keep playing until the whistle's dead. You know what I mean? Until that, until fourth quarter says zero zero on the clock, and that's all you can do. Um, but. I, Chirping? I don't, I don't think there was any chirping. Not, not that I was remembering, at least. Not that you were involved in, so that's probably good. Not much of a chirper <laughs> myself, though. Yeah. yeah you really, let, you really let your game not. talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 2022, our freshman year, your junior year. Yes. Normal ish. No, completely oh. normal. I gotta bring it back again. He's bringing it back. <laughs> we're going to our blue white scrimmage. Probably the last blue white scrimmage. I tear my labrum on my right shoulder. I do remember this. So, go ahead now. Continue going into my junior year. Well, I mean, kind of, so you were out for a good portion of the fall. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, a, l- a little difficult. Um, again, I was in, in high school. I never had an injury in my life. Um, I have, you know, my school's record of having 86 games consecutive played. In. Um, again, never had an injury in my life. So going to, and uh, diving at the end of the end line on a blue white scrimmage, gonna have some heart into it. Yep. Went there and my shoulders went back, and everything just went numb. Still torn, by the way. Never fixed it, but um, you know, just kept riding with it. Um, you know, trainers just said to keep playing with it, take the Advil when you need it, do your thing, and see where it goes at the end of the year. Again, got the MRI as of ever. You know, got the MRI, came back, you know, said it was torn. And then rolling back into my junior season, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with, uh, you know, a torn labrum. And, you know, again, I'm, you know, coming, taking a adversity of an injury that, A, I've never been a part of in my life, um, was was quite tough. Uh, and, you know, I had a, we, we started off with a big 
wrap around the shoulder, good old fashioned wrap around, mm. and uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, a wrap around, <laughs> and, and that was tough because you know now you got to change the style of your game because you know you're so used to just being as elusive as possible and just doing whatever you're doing without thinking, but now you have a you know restriction going on that keeps your elbow tucked and keeps or your shoulder down and nothing can ever be raised because. If, I don't know if you know much about a, a dislocation. I don't know if you ever had a dislocation, but uh, all it is is just a. Uh, I mean, at least in the shoulder, it's just that shifting of like your the joint. I got. I ain't a scientist. I got no idea. But it's uh-huh. the shifting of the shoulder popping in and then popping out, um, and then and, the, and during that process, it's whatever happens happens. And fortunate enough, mine was just a labrum. But um, yeah, going into that junior season, I had to you know deal with that and figure that out. And I was pretty good for a while, uh, for for a really good bit, and kind of strengthened the muscles around it. You know, I did you know again back in the gym, working on the shoulder, working on. The, you know I mean, I got, I can't do as much weight as I can now with my shoulder. I got to take it easy, but it goes back to what Nikki was talking about earlier with a lot of reps. And I mean, just doing a lot of reps and seeing how that goes. Um, but a little fast forward more into the alumni game in my junior year, I did it again. And I, I dislocated, I popped it out, and I popped it back in. Um, so I knew that I, if I had to get surgery, I was done. But um, I'm kind of the the guy that I'm going to keep pushing myself until I humanly can't do it no more. Um, and so that's what I did. I said, screw it. I'm going to figure out a way, and I'm going to you know wrap it up and play. Wow. And then you alluded to this earlier. Uh, go through the entire spring season, mm-hmm. normal spring. Normal spring. Uh, we have the ups and downs. Yeah. We do a solid. Uh, we have our, our crazy games against York, against Salisbury. Electric. Um, we have the Lynchburg games. Hufflings. Yeah, like uh, up and down season. Yeah. We get to the NCAA yeah. third round, technically. Yeah. Beat Washington Lee. Yeah. Playing Salisbury. Yeah. Seagull Stadium. Yeah. What yeah. happened? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like I, I pointed out earlier, but. Uh, Again, a guy never had an injury. You know, deals with a shoulder injury, adapts to it, tries to figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was getting chirped at for, you know what I mean, knocking down passes. I, I can't raise my stick. You know what I mean? I, I, I literally physically couldn't move my shoulder probably, you know, above my head. So, again, knocking down passes was tough. Ground balls was kind of tough because, again, I'm locked in. But, I'm you know what I mean? Like, I'm there. I'm communicating. I'm still part of it. Following up to the Salisbury game and the you know NCAA tournament, uh, last quarter, last minute, last game, um, non-contact injury, I tear my ACL, um, not knowing. I thought I hyperextended it. So weird pop. I, I got a video of it if y'all want to see it, but it's nothing crazy at all. It just looks like I stumbled. Um, so I jog off the field and I, I continue. I don't. I don't stop the game. I, I keep playing. I guess. You know, I'm limping because I know something's wrong, but I don't know it's that wrong to that intensity. Mm-hmm. I jog off the field. I go see Jess, and I say, Jess, like, something went happen. I didn't hear a pop, but um, something's off. She does the whole knee thing. Again, me, young, didn't know anything about it. Now that I live with more, you know, recognition of what, you know, an ACL tear looks like and all that kind of stuff, my knee shifts. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it at all, but uh, there's a simple – um, you know, way that you can kind of tell, like, when you tear your ACL and the doctors do it, it's kind of like a really, like, a pretty big shifting motion with yeah. your tibia and your fibula. Look at that. Vocab. Um, 10 points. <laughs> and then um, she goes, well, get up, go jog down and back and see how it goes. I get up, I jog down and back, no problems. Fine. She goes, all right, do some cutting. I cut down, I cut back the last cut I make on my left leg to go cut back in just so I know everything is good, my knee buckles. And I was like, fuck, that's not supposed to do that. <laughs> um, I run over the sideline. I say, Jess, if we can just wrap it up, keep it stiff, I'll keep playing. I run over to Cove. I said, something's wrong, but um, I- I'm willing to keep playing. There was like four minutes left. And he just looked at me and goes, it's, it's not worth it. You know I mean, it's not worth, you know, straining anything else. So that was that was kind of that and, you know, losing that game and, you know, having, you know, everyone yelling at you like, hey, like, let's go, like, figure it out, like, strap up, like, 
You know what I mean? You probably just did a little hyperextension. You know, it is what it is. You know, it gets you A, mad, but B, motivated. Like, I know, I'm trying to get the freak back in there. Mm-hmm. It's not me. It's not me. It's, it's them. It's, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I came back and, uh, you know, I slept. I just wrapped it up. We got on the bus. We drove back. You know, next day or two, we always have our locker clean outs. Mm-hmm. Um, just checks it out again. Very minimum swelling. You know, kind of like the obvious thing to an, a- an ACL tear is kind of that swelling. And mine didn't swell. So we're like, fuck yeah. I'm good. I'm mint. Let's fucking go. So I go, all right, fuck it. I go on the, uh, the good old turf of Edith Rob and I go, just do a couple laps, just run around. Because I know I'm good. I'm fine. I, I feel good. I feel great. I feel fine. Just, you know, go to the doctor. Doctor checks us out. And then I'm walking. He's, you know, he's looking at my leg. He's falling behind me. He goes, Kyle, before you even get into the room, I know you already tore your ACL. And I go, what? He goes, you're favoring one side. And you're doing this with your toes and this with your feet. You know, and as doctors, you're going to pick that up easily. But as a kid that tore his shoulder and it really wasn't that bad. You know what I mean? And I go and I, you know, he tells me to tear my ACL. And you're like, what the frick does this guy know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to put any names out there, but he's very high accolades, like does a lot, like very good doctor. Knows who he's talking about. Knows who he's talking about. And I'm like, what the hell does this guy know? Who I do you think you are? He doesn't, I know, he doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know my ability. I'm him. Literally. I go see another doctor. Coolest doctor in the world. He was like a Harvard lacrosse guy, like captain of the team for like three, four years. Real cool guy. Um, kind of gave me the same spiel, walked me through it, said, hey, you, you did tear your ACL. So you're looking at it, and you're, now you're thinking like, fuck, I tore it. Done. It's off my, literally the ligament's not there. Fast forward, um, I give it a couple months. Um, coaches were not happy that I gave it a couple months. They wanted that thing immediately. But I had to bring up a point that I got to make money. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's just as important as going to school and, you know, being a part of the team and stuff like that. But I also have a life too. You know what I mean? So I wore a brace. like, a, like It was like a sleeve, but it had like the, the same – like a lockout motion as like a my ACL brace now does. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wore that all summer and it was fine. It did, it did the job, did the purpose. You know, nothing was worse and nothing became worse than it needs to be. Uh, you know, got my surgery in July, uh, July 28th, exact. And uh, yeah, kind of rolled in from there coming into my senior season. Wow. So you go through that recovery process. <laughs> yeah finally are able to get back on the field and obviously you're back practicing. I mean, yeah. I think everybody remembers our first practice back, the first time flying around, yeah. that, like everything you take for granted. We talked about those yeah. who said last week yeah. where you don't realize how much you miss it until you can't do yeah. it for seven, eight months. Yeah, 100%. Uh, first game back, what was that like? Um. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to like the, that, that motionless person. Um, just kind of went out there and said, hey, see what happens. You know what I mean? Like when you kind of have injuries like that, you have to trust yourself. You know what I mean? You, you just did a lot of, you know, rehab and a lot of this for six to seven months straight three times a week. Plus you're doing stuff on your own five times, six times a week. You know what I mean, you got to trust the work that you put into it. And it takes a lot of guts and it takes a lot of, you know, balls to say, Trust it. Yeah. And a lot of people don't. And a lot of people still have that fear of, hey, I'm going to go back out there and this might happen to me again. But you can't. You, you just got to You just gotta think about it as whatever happens, happens, and it's happening for a reason. Um, and so I went out there. It was Verts Endicott, and I was 230-somewhat pounds, some thick boy <laughs> going out there playing, and I was moving like a cinder block wall. My dad told me, he goes, I don't think I've ever seen you move slower a day in your lacrosse career. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. I was like, oh, it was fun to play. <laughs> like, I had we a great won. time. Yeah. yeah, we won. We had a great time. But uh, not at the same time. It was just like, you know what I mean? You, ha- you got to get back to 
the way that you played. And I think as the season went on, I think it was that the sales game under the lights where I kind of was like, I think I'm kind of back. I think I'm kind of there. Uh, did I lose all the weight that I wanted to? No. But was I, did I lose like 10 pounds of it? I was getting close. Mm. Not that I, not that I really watch my weight, but I'll step on a scale here and there. You know, we go into Dustin's office and I'll step on there if they were on mat, you know what I mean? Got a nice weekend hanging out with the fellas, you know, you're like popping on there Monday. What do you think I'm going to be doing Monday tomorrow? <laughs> Pop on the scale, see where I'm at. You know what I mean? Got to watch yourself. Give it a look. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. No, hundred percent. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I kind of just was like, you know, lost a little weight as the time goes on, time goes on and, you know, kind of just play through it and just didn't think about it and just had fun with it. I mean, like I was stopped eight months, six months, seven months out of surgery and I'm diving and I'm sliding and I'm getting ready. Having fun. Having fun. Yeah. Enjoying but you can't, you, you, you can't think about it. You just got to trust what the work And is. that's like a big thing I see. And like, I think we brought it up with like Seb last week and we might not have, but we brought it up with people before, especially on our team. And that's like, it's something we see on the field right like you're one of the guys that i see it with friggy pd like i i the list goes on and it's 27 people yeah but we have fun yeah everybody looks like they're having fun and it's because they're yeah. having fun yeah no one's faking it no it's, it's impossible to fake having no. fun. and you can you can bs it and say like oh like here we go again yeah. back in the rain but at the end of the day like i mean coach luke make a, a really great point of you know we look back at this in a year and I, and I remember there was a practice last year that I was dreading. I didn't want to go out there for anything. You could have paid me money and I wouldn't stand out there. But I looked at PJ and I, PJ looked at me and I go, let's run on the field right now and make some noise. Because then why not? You know, you might make a fool of yourself. Yeah. Why not? So we were running out there and we're screaming at the top of our line, let's go. We know we're yee ye and like, oh, it's fucking nice out. Let's fucking go. And the boys get rowdy with it. And I'm not much of a, a big energy guy. I don't. I think that the more I express myself, the more that karma hits. The more that I chirp at something, the more the karma hits. So I try to stay as exposed as I possibly can and you know, keep myself together. But that was that one moment I was like, fuck you. Yeah. Let's go out there and have some fucking fun. Because why not? Because why not? Uh, so that's a great transition into kind of this year. Yeah what is, it's your fifth year yeah you have the covid year which yeah. is kind of allowing you two covid years two covid years i can't even like get started <laughs> on that um but the news breaks about cabrini yeah why are you here right now that's a great point uh you know it, 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 to bring it again bring it back a little bit it was a it was an unfortunate set of events and i think that everybody kind of knew what was gonna you know happen with cabrini later down the road but honestly to me i didn't think it was gonna happen now yeah. And, um, it, again, my s junior year was the only year that I had a full season. And, uh, again, I was a guy that played 80 whatever somewhat consecutive games in high school. And I just didn't feel like I was done yet. Is the body going to take it? Fuck yeah, it is. You know I mean? I'm, I'm going to try as much as I possibly can. But I think to say that um, being the last Cavalier – or being the last lacrosse team, the last what a Korean lacrosse player in program history, is something special that you can bring and you can kind of you know tell people like, yeah, I was the last one on that team, and we had a fucking awesome time. Every day we had fun. Yeah, we had fun every single day. It didn't matter if we were walking through the damn hallway. I spent time and you know with people that you know I truly love. I'll take a bullet for any of them, but at the same time. It was just uh, more memories that you can cherish and you can kind of keep those in the past like I've been sharing earlier. You know what I mean, I don't know. Just something that uh, just not done yet. Job's not done. I like that. Job's and I think done. that uh, that hits an nail on the head. Um, and that's a great kind of way to wrap up talking about Cabrini. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at the 214 mark right now. Uh, is that is that I mean, wild? Or? It's, it's, it's very it's, good. It's more wild than you would expect. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm at 10% over here, but you can keep going. But no, I mean, it's actually perfect. You're at 10% because we're actually, this is where we're going to start like wrapping right. up a little bit. Okay. So what okay. we've been doing uh, in the past couple is actually Fergie's brilliant idea of moment of the week. So moment we, of the week. We express a moment from this past week, Any, from Sunday to Sunday. It okay. could be happy, it could be sad, it could be angry, anything. Just a moment that stands out that you want to highlight. Lacrosse base, us base. It, it could be anything, but here's the thing. Our guest 
never goes first. So I can mm. lead us off here because I have I've been I but think about this a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's every Sunday I definitely. think like start to finish I try to come up with like a good moment of the week because you know like life's pretty dope I have some fun stuff that goes on Fuck but yeah. I, I try to have something that like stands out as yeah. like okay this could be a good one to share mm-hmm. and uh, I thought about it midway through this episode I realized yeah. it was I want to say Tuesday or Wednesday I wake up from a text uh, with a text from Marissa next girlfriend and it is a snap memory from a year ago. Uh, pause. Sweet girl, by the way. Met her last night for the first time. I appreciate it. Yeah, sweet girl. Happy She's for awesome. man. Happy for you. She Thank got you. us a pizza and a uh, stromboli for I lunch. Mo- oh, oh, she gave you pizza. To this she she bought the pizza tonight. Mm-hmm. I bought it last night. And was, then, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you, actually, you had more pizza <laughs> than me. Yeah. My man, let's take a slice. I'm like, yeah, all right. I'm like, dude, seriously, dude, take as much as you, take as much as you want. I take the whole. Th- it was there was two slices left. That you fold them on top of each other and ate all your sandwich. That's, that the, that's the, right the, the right way to do it. It's the right way to do it. That's the man true. way to do it. It's true. And it was good. It was actually like, I, I was, you know, I was, I was not down bad, but like I was starving. Mm-hmm. And a pepperoni yeah. pizza, hits. it hits. Yeah, I had this, especially I had Hillcrest. Two, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, dude, I've ordered more food at Hillcrest <laughs> than I have at any other house that hasn't been mine while at school. You know, that's crazy to say that because. Again, um, we don't really have too much parties, and that's on me mostly. Um, you know, we can keep going into that if you wanted to, but um, it's funny you say that because it's like we don't really have too many parties. Like every hey, time you know I mean? I've been at your house past ten p.m., I've ordered Gorgash. <laughs> that's awesome. Love it every time. But we, I got to tell you, we got a lot of a lot of food places by us. You do Wendy's. They yes. slapped. I had a uh, baconator last night before oh. I had my Papa John's. Johnny and Ella did too. They were munching on that baconator and fries and. I don't know. I think they had Dr. P too, but like mm. Dr. P. Yeah. They, I, I, they, I, they, they went to work. The best doctor. That's okay. good. Mm. My moment of the week actually was last night. Mm. Um, as everybody knows, this is recorded on Sunday. So Saturday night, um, a dear friend of mine got married. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Hunter Waldron. Hunter Waldron. Yeah. Yes. Uh, very happy for you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, it was beautiful. Huh? Got to be a part of the ceremony. Yeah. Uh, walked down, was one of the bachelors. And I mean, just like tears in my eyes the yeah. entire time. Now, pr- just they, a proud moment. They grow very. up so fast. Yeah. Seriously. Pr- just an absolute proud moment. You know, you know, you, you wish nothing but the best for that kid in his career of, uh, you know, being a married man. And, you know, hopefully the, the kids come soon. You know, congratulations to the wife as well. Of I mean, course. You want to give her a shout out. Yeah. There you go. Um, great couple. Beautiful it, couple. It, it was yeah. just a great atmosphere, too. 100%. I mean, uh, everyone at Cabrini was just so excited for Hunter. Mm-hmm. And y- y- everybody loves weddings. Yes. Who and doesn't love a wedding? We're going to need a new theme going up. Yeah, we go to Abilene. Yeah, and I'm I'm kind of liking the formal theme. I yeah, I, I, I got like idea the formal too. theme. We could do a twenties party, Gatsby party. Yo, just saying. Yeah, like mm-hmm. we're in twenties. You're a member of the week. I'm 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 not gonna copy you, but I'm gonna copy you. That's fine. I, we, I, I think that um you know having that wedding yesterday was a uh, was a really a good setting point for me, and I I, I was gonna dabble with it a little bit earlier, but it kind of gave me the you know the clarity of saying like, hey, I can kind of trust these guys just a little bit more because I woke up this morning. And there wasn't even a can in our kitchen. Wow. Really? I don't know who cleaned it. I don't know what. One of the girlfriends. Probably. (laughs) But I I, I did my typical clean. And if anybody knows me, I'm a neat freak. Mm. And I'm like, i not OCD. Mm, Probably OCD. A little bit. But we all have have a little OCD. Yeah. That's all right. But I'm a neat freak. I like my thing. Everything's got to be clean. I'm bleaching everything. Everything's got to be clean. So my, my job this morning was not, you know, not as bad as it normally has been in the past. But, um. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm definitely open to the fact of uh, having more parties. I think that's uh, kind of something that I want to try to do and, you know, because we can only have so many house parties when you're in college because once you get out of college, it's frowned upon. It's frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I think we can continue to theme parties. I think those are, you know, a buttload of fun. Very smart. Yeah, with Halloween coming up too. Of course. That's going to be a great one. Could get dangerous. Yeah. Um, I just realized that we got distracted talking about Marissa. I didn't even get to the g- g- gist of what my moment of the week was. I was going to say, I don't even think you gave your moment. So I get the Snapchat from Marissa. It was a memory mm. from last year. And it's me with a giant smile on my face, thumbs up, because I was the Cav Cav like, champion. You know, Cav Cav trivia <laughs> yeah, thing goes yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Marissa found me and obviously like took a picture, sent it to me. And I was like, no way. This is awesome. No, yeah. But. For another reason, because that same day is when at practice that night, we had an 8 to 10 o'clock practice. Happy Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Happy Rosh Hashanah, yep. Um, that practice, I got cracked by Sam Kirk 
from behind. Oh, the chest. Fell down and thought I broke my sternum. Oof. So I went to the ER that night. He's a big boy. He's went, a big boy. We went to the ER as a family. It was me, Nick, and Marissa. Uh, just walking to Bryn Mawr Hospital. We go to urgent care first. They try to diagnose me. They're like, oh, we think you broke your like xiphoid process. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Um, and <laughs> I'm also like, thinking the same thing right now. Yeah, they're like, uh, it's not good. I'm like, fuck. Pretty much you're going to die. Yeah, literally. Um, so they they say, we want you to go to the hospital, get more x-rays, stuff like that. Walk into the hospital. Cool, they get my heart rate. I kill the ECG. I fucking pass that thing with... EKG colors. Fuck yeah, you did, Fridge. It, it was a, it was EKG. You got me. Um, Electrocardiogram. <laughs> Engaging the common good. Yeah. Okay, that's why I said that. Um, you guys are getting too smart for me over there. Regardless, <laughs> uh, go in and then we're just waiting. We sit there for four hours. We don't leave until one o'clock. Didn't you go with somebody? Yeah, it was with Nick and Marissa. Oh, they, they stuck yes. with it the entire time. That's oh. why I say happy Rosh Hashanah because I took a picture of him outside of the hospital and it just happened to be Rosh Hashanah. Mm. And one of my big things is just put one of the Snapchat filters that makes no sense on a picture that has some sense behind it. I do the same thing with golf. We might, me and my buddy would do that. Like we go to some random course and we'll put like Augusta on it. Yeah, I love literally. doing and that. And people are like, you you, wait, you really shooting at Augusta? <laughs> You're no. in Georgia? Like, no. <laughs> there it is. For the... For the viewers listening or uh, watching on youtube you can see outside of the hospital just a little field trip <laughs> me sitting there with my uh i think referral or my ekg from the urgent care and of course i just got a big smile on my face and a thumbs up yeah that's a friggy special around 12 30 friggy so we left at, like, well you one. just figured out you didn't die so yeah. i mean like that smile better be as big as it can get well, that was before i even walked into the hospital yeah oh because you, you were the, still smiling the we fun waited. part we that didn't one. i didn't see a doctor that night we waited that entire time, and it got to the point where I'm like, okay, it's one o'clock. I'm starving. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. I haven't, well, well. I haven't fucking showered since practice. Like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm not gonna die. I'm going to survive. Yeah. I'm going home. Mm-hmm. So we decided to leave. Yeah. At twelve thirty, some psycho girl. So you were never in. diagnosed with anything. Mm, uh, I was. I didn't. I had a um a scratch on it, so it wasn't actually broken. It just had like a mic, not a micro fracture, but like a little um abrasion i think was the word that they used okay. so i just had to sit out for like i think it was a week and yeah. then i was clear but everything yeah. else was perfectly yeah fine. i remember that you were not too long yeah and uh that was very scary because i thought that it was gonna be way worse and i already had a bad injury i, I remember that was bad dude because i was about to leave here and go over to campus and you called and you're like hey are you home and i was like yeah and you're like yeah i have to go to the er and i was like okay i'm 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 staying here and i think the funniest part about this too is i uh my phone died in the hospital and hmm. I kind of, so I called my mom outside. Uh, I was like, are you with dad right now? Um, okay. Are you sitting down? <laughs> so first off I'm okay, but I am at the hospital. <laughs> what? Yeah. Going to- okay, Same thing. Calm down. <laughs> Fine. Mm-hmm. Everything's going to be okay. And I was just like cracking jokes left and right. Uh, kind of like ease the mood. Mm-hmm. Well, smart. Since my phone died, I forgot to like text an update at mm-hmm. the end of the night. Uh, and she got very mad at me <laughs> and Mrs. Mormando, got very mad at me because Ooh. she is my mom out here now mm. and she's the liaison between mm. my mother back home. I love that. Yes. Uh, so she gave me a little bit of an earful the next time I yeah. saw her where she was like, you're yeah. never doing that again. We're not yeah. doing that. No, I love that. I, I, I'm getting that. That's the same vibe that I have with, you know, um, coach Raph. Not, not, probably not. Even, not. I can't do it now because he's coaching. That's not probably right right yeah probably not no probably not. Uh, morally but morally but we're immoral but with blake's parents and johnny's parents like you know they, they consider i'm a you know two hours away i'm not a local boy they take me under my wing or take me under their wing and you know we'll have some dinner sometimes and that's that's like part of like the the family of all this that i love the most like yeah, people are just so you know open welcome and just just feel like family it's from, the best yeah, it's the best. yeah. I, I actually vividly remember my freshman year we were at um fuck we were at plus and yeah we were sitting and I was next to the fridge and I was like, what are you for Thanksgiving, man? And he's like, I'm going to Nate's. I've already had like eight people ask me. And I was like, yeah, I mean, welcome at my house too if you need a place. And he was like, yeah, all right, cool. That was one of the coolest yeah. things because I was kind of like, not freaking out, but I was worried about that, obviously. Yeah. Like, no. First one, everyone's going home and it's like, I know a lot of yeah. my friends are going back home and yeah. I had been set on like, it's just, it doesn't make sense to go for yeah. four days and spend like $400 on flights. Yeah. 
Uh, so when everybody was just offering me, I think like I said, yeah. eight, it had to be close to like 40, oh, wow. like, the entire team, people from other teams, everybody was just like, so what are you doing? Like, you're welcome. Yeah. I'm like, this warms my heart. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think a question that I have to follow up on that would be like, what made you come out here? You know, from a guy that's on the West coast and you know what I mean? You were on the other side of the country. Uh, like what was, it was it like job opportunities. Was it like the city? Was it like, what, what was the. I want to go to a small Catholic school in Radnor, Pennsylvania. Well, the big thing, like lacrosse has been a part of my life since I started playing sure, second absolutely. grade. And I kind of understood once I decided like this is something I want to do in college, like I really want to strive for it. I understood I couldn't go to a local school and play college lacrosse. Mm-hmm. Like I had to go far. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, I think the thing that made it easy was transferring high schools and going to um oday which is in downtown seattle 45 minutes away from my house mm-hmm. i commute down every day and basically spend most of my uh time away from my house yeah so that allowed me to be very independent right when i came out here to visit like i am i love the east coast just because it's so different mm-hmm. in like little ways and it's mm-hmm. cool like I'm, I'm a little history geek so mm-hmm. like being in philadelphia mm-hmm. where u.s history uh, all, all that fun right. stuff uh, and then when I got on the campus, I just fell in love. Like, yeah. I knew that it was the right spot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, for me, in the sense that I, I wasn't a big partier. Ooh. I didn't really like to go out in high school. Again, I was really just committed to lacrosse, like lacrosse was my world. So going to a small, you know, mom said it was Catholic, or my mom said, but mom knowing it was a Catholic school, she was all into it. Fired up. Yeah, fired <laughs> up. Um, you know, it just, everything just, there's a lot of check marks that just, you know, came across. But, um, I want to go back. So you transferred schools? Yeah, in high school. I went my local for lacrosse school. For purposes or for educational purposes? or More, it was, I'd say lacrosse had a role in it because, honestly, I almost quit lacrosse my freshman year of high school. Interesting. Um, uh, playing for my high school. I would have mm-hmm. played club ball, uh, but I just wasn't having fun my freshman year. Mm. It was, our team sucked. It, it was awful. Nobody was committed. Like, my last game yeah. that year, I think we had 12 guys on the sideline. <sighs> And it, it, it was just tough. My dad was our coach. He was getting really stressed out about yeah. stuff. Like, not a good spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew a couple of my friends were going to uh, O'Day, which is the school I ended up graduating from. Mm-hmm. So I started to look into it. And it's like a private Catholic school. Mm-hmm. Like I said, downtown Seattle, very small. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything kind of just started to, like, stand out as, like, I feel like this could be a really cool opportunity for me. And I honestly, I brought it up jokingly at first with my like my parents where I was like, should I just like fucking transfer to O'Day or something? <laughs> and I think my mom and I, my mom was like, do you want to like look into this? Like, I think you yeah. could try to see what happens. Looked at tuition and they're like, Hey, that's not that bad. Like financially we could, we could make this happen. That's awesome. My dad was very, not against it, but uh, apprehensive at first. Mm-hmm. So I remember when I told him like, Hey, I'm applying to O'Day. He had to go out on the porch and just sit there and like calm down. He was like, okay, this is a lot to digest. Cause like, he was bought into the program that we were playing in. Like he kind of helped build when I was young. Totally understandable. So he was really like kind of struggling with that. Uh, my mom and I are doing the application. We go on a visit and uh, I just like kind of the same thing. I knew that that was the place I needed to be mm-hmm. um, and still the best decision that I've ever made. Nice. If Good I had one thing that I could redo in my life, I would go four years there instead of three because the memories I made in three years and the people I was able to meet, stuff I was able to do, if I had that fourth year, I can only imagine what my life yeah, would be like. like that's right. awesome. Good for you, man. That's, I'm you know, happy for you and happy that you you know you chose the right – you feel it's the right decision. So you know, kudos to you. I love how I just got to steal Fuck the, yeah, for you. I got to steal the thunder there for a little bit. No, also, but, I, uh, I mean, I like putting roles reverse here. I'm like, I, I, questions just pop up in your head, and you're just like, hmm. Oh, yeah. The and question that, I have for you. The most man. important question. Talk to me. What's our draft? Oh God! Yeah, now you got me scrambled. What's the draft? All right, so let's talk about it for a little bit. We've so had eighteen, so eighteen total. Yeah, we've we've every had, episode we do a draft. Okay, so like, let me put it this way: how how big's the draft? Is Five it? each. Okay, of, and of something. Yes, the something. more broad, the better. Have you let, ever listened to part of my take? No. So they do. It's called Mount Rushmore of any topic. So okay. they'll be like Mount Rushmore of things you want your mom to say to you when you come home mm. from school. Seb did a list last week. Yes. Mm. Or like we've our first one was like foods that begin with the letter G. Shout out Greek yogurt. Um, Shout out garlic. <laughs> and then uh with Bear we did Superheroes. like stuff to do on a Sunday. Yeah. So like the more broad mm. and like kinda oddly specific, 
I think the better because you get some very hot hot takes with like oh, funny things that is uh, easier to grade. Oh jeez. Hmm. So yeah, you can you can brainstorm. Uh, I might have some pre written like I yeah. You want you want to get my memory going a little bit here? Might be or, able to or the mind going because my mom is a active listener of oh uh, really the pod. Hello, mom. Um, Vince, shit. my brother actually has always told us we should have like ten to fifteen draft ideas written down at all times. Yeah, that's definitely smart. Yeah, I feel like always always discredit it, but yeah. it's very smart. Hmm. I feel like she. But does my brother listen all the way to the draft? Is that, is that a real How word? dedicated is he? He's dedicated. Mm-hmm. Honestly, my be. mom only <laughs> so she let's do it this specifically way. listens. Let's stuff. do it this way. Let's see how dedicated your brother is. If you're listening, text Nick and say what our topic was. What our topic is? Yeah, what our topic. When we come up with a topic. I like it. And like see, it. How, like see, it. How, see how dedicated he was. And if he doesn't answer you in a couple of days, text him. I will. I will. That's how you know how dedicated he is. I'll give him a week from the day we release it. Fair. Here is, uh, <laughs> she said, I have some ideas for top five topics if you need any. And LOL. Please. Top five family vacations. Top Ooh. five favorite pizzas. Top five board games. Top five beaches visited. Top five dog breeds. I, actually, I think I'm, I'm really, I'm really going over there on the pizzas. I like the pizzas. So that's a good one. Shout out to your mom with the idea, first of shout all. Out shout Denise. out to Denise. Denise, the girl. I don't think I've ever met you, Denise, but you sound like a wonderful person and Shout she out for is. your great, great topic. Yes. Um, she'll be out here for in April. I Actually, maybe I think I haven't met your mom once or twice. Definitely. I think we might. Don't they come out here with like a little vacation and they stay out for a oh, week? my dad's spring break. Yeah. They gotcha. Come out. They yeah, maybe again. once or twice. Probably a little bit ago. Probably. Yeah. Whole family's coming this year. We're going to go up to New York. Okay. We're 21, so we get to go uh, mm. hit some. Uh, God, you're still 20. I know. I'm oh, a young bull. Freaking Toledo. I'm a young bull. Crazy, right? Wow. But so for. Uh, Wait, pizza. time out. Oh, we got to back it up a little bit. Okay. When do you turn 21? February 7th. Oh, my God. I don't know. three years older than you. Yeah. It's crazy. What the freaking fadiddle. Big shout out Guppies top. that night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guppies is also in Mexico along with uh, the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the first time Nick had a white claw. So, yes. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it's 18 there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, it was in Canada. So, 19. Mm. Which is even more acceptable. Apologies. But. For the pizza toppings, I say we just we we keep it at that. Like draft your, mm-hmm. your all time pizza toppings. Yeah. Okay. Topping. I got it. It's an individual topping, so not like uh you can't mm. say Hawaiian because that's uh, un- understandable. And mm, I understandable. You take pineapple or ham. Understandable. <sighs> uh Kyle, our guest goes first. This is not a snake draft. Mm. So you get five picks. So I'm 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 ripping right off the f- no. 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 I mean, you go, so it is you a go snake. One. No. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So okay. I got, okay. got you. One, two, three, one, got you. Yeah. I got you. Go. <laughs> First pick. I think I'm gonna go with. This is tough. It is. This is really tough because now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm gonna go with like a like a chicken palm, like a chicken. Chicken. Yeah. Okay. I like it. This is where me and the fun part. This is the fun part. We uh, rock paper scissors every time. And now we have cameras. They can. The viewers Mm. can now see. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Down one out. Just grab your hand. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Bang. One, one. Tie game. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Fuck you. Big comeback. Huge comeback. And on that note, you're with a comeback, you're not two. In my hands. In two weeks. Yes. You better tally those up. Two in a row. We, oh. I, I was two for two when we first got back. Yeah, now I've even up the series so, yeah. for the 2023-2024 season. But I'm going with the only pick that I need to take, and that's pepperoni. Pepperoni uh, yeah. is I, the ubiquitous. Yeah. yeah. When you think of a pizza, you either get cheese pizza. <sighs> well, true. Here, here's another thing. Do you guys call it a plain pie or cheese pizza? <sighs> plain, plain pie. Because I've never heard that until I came out east. It's really? always been a cheese pizza. It's, it's, it's actually pie. funny you say that because I feel like, I mean, it's very Delco and Delaware County, but like they got their own language around this place. Yes. So when I came down here my freshman year, I was just some. I don't know, notice it. Yeah, because you got to go Cause, out there. Because you are Delco. <laughs> yeah. But when you, like, I came here, like, I, I learned what like bet is and John. John. John I, 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 or, people uh, people I, were saying those things. I was like, that am I tough. in a different country? Like, in my word. Different, yeah. No. No. Nah. No. What? No. <laughs> English is cool too, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First picnic. Uh, bacon. 
bacon. Yep. You, you, you took a more superior yeah. pizza meat, but I take the more wow. superior I feel like, meat. Yeah. I feel like my pick was really out of pocket. So it's all about what you, you think feel like is chicken. Best. All right, here we go. I took Greek yogurt. My number one food says start with the letter G. He also took the Blue Power Ranger. Yes, so. which is a amazing pick. It, it's a good pick. Just not for number two. That yeah, was three. My <laughs> second pick is going to meatball. Meatball. That's a good one. Okay, that's, that's a, a good great one. one. Mm-hmm. Ooh, big Italian over here. Yeah. Right? Huge Italian. I'm kind of. Uh, I feel like I'm half cheating half. with how this got. Just lollipop. First up of all, can we just acknowledge something before anybody says another topic? Is pineapple on pizza a thing? We, y- I'm not going to say it's, it. It's, it's, a, it's a, thing. a thing. It's a thing, period. But are you going to order that? No. Um, I wouldn't choose to order it. I would never order just pineapple on pizza. <sighs> like I, a, a Hawaiian pizza, if it's there, I'll, I'll eat it. But I would never be like sitting here, yeah. oh, okay, I want to order a pizza. I want pineapple and ham. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a disgrace to me. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I get it, sweet and savory, but like, no, save it for another food. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not as bad as people think it is. No, I, would, I would never buy it. Fred, you sorry, I cut you off. Go no, ahead. this is a good reminder. Actually, uh, write down your picks so that we, when we're that's at a, the end, that's a great because we'll do a recap. So I'm, I'm dying over here. So let everybody know one percent of things cut. All oh, right, hey, hey, oh, hey, we're good. Let's, let's actually, yeah, it, it's gonna be fine uh, if the video cuts out. We'll still have the audio. But yeah, okay. uh, my second pick, I'm gonna go sausage. Yeah, I, I was I pepperoni was, sausage. I'm gonna be honest, that was my next pick too. I was writing down sausage, but then I figured that's when cool. you said that, you were gonna get it. Yeah, so that's a great pick. I'm actually gonna gonna go flip on you guys. Sauce and on an upside down pie. Oh, that is Ooh. horrendous. I'm, you can take that to the grave. I don't know about that one. Yeah, you can keep fellas, it. you've never had a good upside down pie. And you're right. Yeah. And I've also never thought when I want a pizza topping, ooh, I'm on sauce. Well, I'm sorry, you, you guys took all the pizza toppings. There's no. way more pizza There's toppings. There's way out more, there. but I got I'd rather have an upside down the pie rib. than the I other got, shit you guys are gonna say. I got one that I think you're probably gonna take here. So mine's a pie. Mm. Nah, I might leave it. I might leave it. Ooh. I might leave it on the table. What am I going to choose as my third pick? Third. Shit. Took sausage, right? Yep. That's a great pick. But you could still say turkey sausage. That's out of pocket. That's a me pick. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, that would be me. Trying to throw shade. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Turkey bacon. <sighs> oh, mm, no. I already said it. Should have did pies. Pies would have been better, but it's cool. Um, I think. I'm, I'm between two right now. The hardest part is picking which one is like needs to be taken now before I snag right. one of us. And then if it gets around, you get both of them. It's, it's like, when am I going to take my quarterback in my happy. fantasy draft? Yeah. Happy with my list that I just created. Oh, wow. He's already created it. Oh, that's what I do. I have a couple going off the rip. Really? <sighs> you got this. I know. I, I believe do. in you. This I is my 19th you. draft. I, I, I know what I'm doing. I think this is actually... 18, I think we took chicken. What was my, what was Meatball. my second? Meatball. That was a great pick. It was. That was a good pick. Underrated. I was not thinking that. Never would have. I'm going to do it. Do it. It's like, it's a, you know what a white pie is? Yeah, it's fucking delicious. That. But what's yeah. the topping on a white pie? <sighs> well, so like, it's, it's, the, it's the cheese. The sauce. Is that my sauce? It'd be the sauce. Yeah. All right. But like, it's you're, the, you're saying. It's ricotta American cheese. Sauce. That's what it is. Ricotta? Ricotta. 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 Prosciutto. 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 Mozzarella. <laughs> You're so delco. Ma- ma- <laughs> mozzarella, not oh. mozzarella, because there's an A at the end. Same with prosciutto, prosciutto. with the O. I'm prosciutto. Going with, yeah. You say oregano? No. Oregano. Yeah, you say oregano. Yeah, because there's oregano. an O at the end. <laughs> Pronouncing. Wow. Yeah, I'm an American. <laughs> He's oh yeah! Del- if, you, if you couldn't tell, he's a Delconian. Delconians. Um, Rigotta is my pick. I hope my dad hears that part. I mean, that's a fine, <laughs> I'll find is that a that. cheese though? Rigotta. Rigotta is a cheese. Ricotta yeah, is, it, it ricotta is, is definitely a cheese. I never heard is, of Rigotta. Well, you no, keep I'm saying. Fuck, oh, fuck, okay. Okay. I was gonna say, but that is like your. It's a specific cheese. Because okay. when right. I think of a, a okay. plain pie or cheese pizza, yeah, I don't want to be so remember so, specific. You know what I mean, or, or so just cheese. You know what I mean, if you just said cheese, and I'm like, well, Rigotta is cheese, but like. It's the fluffy, spreadable it. ricotta. Delicious, delicious. Yeah. We, had, we had a uh, me and Marissa. We actually ordered a upside, not upside down. We ordered a white 
uh, pizza a couple weeks back. Oh, really good. good. Oh, really, really good. good so good. Pizza. Yeah. So good. I'm going to just keep going with the meat lovers. I'm going to take ham. Yeah, I saw that coming. Wow. I saw that coming. You're a big breakfast meat guy. Yeah. Are you a uh, breakfast guy? Massive. I, bre- if I could have breakfast for every single meal, I would. That's crazy. There are days where I will literally just eat breakfast food. Wow. Start yeah. to finish. Wow. It's delicious. That's a good day, though. Like yeah. a breakfast sandwich at any time of the day is amazing. A hundred percent. When I go to Wawa, if I'm getting food from the hot counter, I'm getting a breakfast burrito. That's fair. It, no, that's, pained, that's valid. it pained me today on the way to Team 10. I went in at 11.50. Not a single bagel sandwich. Not a, not, not a single breakfast sandwich, rather. No sizzles. Did they not save you one? No sizzles. They had like they had, like the chicken oh, bites. Wawa, and, like, all, yeah, I thought they said like, they bought you one. Nah, yeah. nah, that was I, I wish. wish. I would have been one. upset. Um. Pick. Yeah. So, after taking ham, which was my next pick, I'm gonna take a cheesesteak. So like, <sighs> not. I don't want. I didn't want to say steak, and then people mm. think like filet, but you know, like yeah. chip steak. Yeah, cheesesteak. Um, a it's a good topping. Yeah, uh, Domino's they actually have a really, really good really you cheese can, yeah. yeah, you can custom make your own. But yeah, yeah, it's that's good. That's a great one. <sighs> All right. So I have a pick, but I'm gonna wait for my last one because I know nobody's gonna pick it. But. He wants to end off with a bang. Oh, let's get it. It's actually this is but this, this could this could be in the comments. It could be that controversial. It's my last pick, but I gotta think of something in between it. Damn, that controversial. I'm on the edge. People are gonna comment seat. about it. They, they might. They, oh, depending on who listens to it. Jeez. We're gonna get the pizza police. They're gonna call us and be like, "What happened?" My next <laughs> pick. Just trying to taste it. You know what I mean? I know. Uh-huh. Surely trying to like. It's just, important. Yeah, it's really trying to like. Mm, that was good. Mm. I like that. I'm trying to think of uh, computer's dead. By the way. Oh yeah, you are frozen there. That's kind of funny. <laughs> you're well, just actually not. Should I close, should I close it now? No, that's actually keep it open because yeah. if your audio is still rolling and your well, picture's just frozen there, it's not a horror. The audio through this, so no matter what, we can just keep going. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I know. I'm just saying, but it's yeah. <sighs> All right, I'm doing it. I'm gonna do it right off the rip. Forget. Broccoli. <laughs> no and yes. Sam's Pizza down in Wildwood. They have broccoli the best on pizza. Bro- broccoli and cheddar pizza. Oh, it's delicious. You ever had it? No. Oh, yeah, you're missing out. You oh, my you God. Right. That's a good pick. I'll give you some. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It is good. Listen, I know I was just talking about how Italian it was, and I just went broccoli on you. It's, it's a great pick. It's good. You ever have, like, mac and cheese and broccoli? No. Broccoli. Okay, I was never the biggest broccoli guy growing up. I, I only recently got huge. into it, and I need, I want crispy broccoli. You're also not a big mm. cheese person. Yeah, yeah, I'm not so a big I mean, cheese, yeah. big cheese head, but not a cheese person. Yeah, that's right. Um, all right, my fourth pick. I think I'm gonna go with something that would pair well <sighs> on. Did you just give it away? Huh? Did you say pair? No, I, mean, I, I, heard I think that. it's. I heard people put pears on pizza. I have had a, a pepperoni and pear pizza before. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was at like a gourmet restaurant. It was actually very, very well, tasty. If it's gourmet, yeah, then yeah, it's got to be good. Um, but I am going to go with something that would pair well with one of Kyle's picks earlier. Mm. I'm going to take buffalo sauce yes. for a buffalo chicken pizza. Oh, I was buffalo thinking that, sauce. but I was thinking like double chicken. Like, like I might to say chicken again. Yeah, drizzle's great because you can put that on. I anything. got one. Put that shit on anything. Nice. I got one. Well, mod pizza. I love mod pizza. Yeah. I do a mod Maddie with chicken, buffalo, and barbecue. Really, really good. Um, my number four is basil. Classic. Good. That's a great pick. It's, That's it's a safe one. good enough yeah. to anything, any other topping that yeah. you're going to throw on a pizza. Just add a couple of leaves of basil. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's better. Mm-hmm. More fresh. Agreed. Ready. I need it. Balsamic vinegar. Yeah, I was yeah, leaning there. I wasn't. That's what I was going to choose my four, but like I just had to get the broccoli out. <laughs> I had I had to get the you were scared nope. it was going to go. I mean, <laughs> I don't. You I never I, know. You never know. <laughs> I clearly, someone likes it and someone doesn't. So true, true, true. Now balsamic glaze on a on a pizza that doesn't like happen. a like a nice like Caesar pie. You ever have like a Caesar pie? Caesar pie. Yeah. Whoa, no, but I would probably love that because mm. I'm a big Caesar nice. salad guy. Mm. That good? Chicken Caesar wrap. Well, it's like a chicken Caesar wrap, but like they put that like you can add like I don't know. I get like my local pizzeria by me, and I add balsamic on top of it. Mud on a meat. That tastes so good. Money. Um, I wanted to go with another sauce here, but I don't think I can go two sauces in a row. You did three breakfast meats. I do. Um, but 
I'm going to get a little bit of a vegetable in. And if broccoli is going to be a controversial pick. Don't say mushrooms. No, absolutely oh, not. Is that even a vegetable? Yeah. Huge onion guy. It's a fun guy. Um, I'm going to take You're the You're a fun onion. guy. I'm taking the onion. Yeah. Wow. I think onions is something what that- What are you putting that on? Well, if it's like a barbecue chicken pizza, money, okay. gasoline. Fair enough. Any like pairing onions and chicken on a pizza, I think is it's hard to miss. Mm. You could put it- you could put it on a buffalo chicken pizza. I feel like you'd be out of place there, mm-hmm. but it would complement the savoriness of the chicken well. Mm-hmm. Or even like on a meat lovers, toss some onions on it. Gets you a little mm-hmm. extra crunch. Mm-hmm. I get. I like that you said onions because it, it's not my go-to on anything. But I'm not going to take it off. Yeah, exactly. Salad. Yes. If it was broccoli, I would scrape it off. Oh, I would. No. I would not eat it. You got. You got to try it one day. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll actually like it. Mm-hmm. If you ever come back up to Nate's Thanksgiving, I will. I'm about 25 minutes from Nate's. You're literally just gonna knock on our door with a broccoli pizza and shove it down my throat. Absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this draft up, fellas. Let's see it. Drum roll, please. French fries. Elaborate. Have you ever had French fries baked into a pizza? I've see, never. like uh, that's crazy to me. French I, fries I on the Zod. I don't. No, no, no. Because you've never had it. You're right. I would never it's walk true. into a pizza shop and be like, "Yo, you got fries." Saying, <laughs> yeah, but if you saw <laughs> it on, it on the slice, pie. you would you would actually say that actually looks delicious. And that one might it. be more controversial than the broccoli. Yeah. No. I mean, flavor wise, it, it, it sounds like it would work, but like I've never been to a pizzeria where that's an option. We need some comments. We need a it. poll. Can, can you do polls? Yeah, that's actually that's how we, we do, do the it. Yeah. Put it up on there. You taking broccoli on some za? You taking some? French fries. We should do an. Uh, we should do an Instagram Mm-mm. poll for that. On here's my thing. You would never put broccoli on a normal slice of pizza, and it would be good. No, it's a special slice no. of pizza yes. with broccoli designed to be. In mm-hmm. it. You can put French fries on a normal slice of pizza, and it is. That's just a delicious. lot of freaking carbs. It is a lot of carbs. Yeah. That's you're just chewing. I'm a freaking big, hot. I'm a big <laughs> carb no guy. sauce, no nothing, just straight <laughs> bread. <laughs> Bread and cheese. Bread and cheese. Your jaw hurts. Bread, bread, cheese, and potatoes. That's crazy. Fried potatoes. Fried potatoes. See, like, I think I think it would be good if you put like French fries with like like a nice chicken, like a crispy chicken on it. Some get that sauce. Maybe that'll taste good. I'm not well, gonna, okay. I'm not so, gonna shut you down on it, but now I that I say, don't if you just put some, try. I'm, if you just put some plain dog and fries on some pizza, dude. Like I don't on a cheese pizza. Mm-hmm. Not on a, che- a plain pie. I think a cheese pizza, and I think of a white pizza. Whoa. No, white Culture is white. Shock. Culture wait, shock. wait, whoa, whoa. White is white. White cheese is white, 100%. Cheese. I think of, when I think of a, a pizza with mm-hmm. nothing but sauce and cheese on it, I think of a plain pie because that is a plain pie. Correct. Yes, I don't I don't think cheese pizza. I think when I think cheese pizza, I think a pizza that has no sauce and it was, it's a white pizza. It's true. Cheese. Valid. That's valid. That's just what I think. All right, I agree. Uh, I was going to make a really good point and it just completely left my I'm sorry. It's okay. It'll probably come back to me like middle of the night. I'll be very mad. But probably. we can do a recap. Screw into your pillow. Yeah, I will. Recap it up. We have to recap the uh, draft. So, Kyle, what is your dream team looking like for pizza? Yeah, I suck chicken. Good dream team. You got to write these now? Uh, no, oh, you just, just say it. Just say it. Just All right, so I did chicken, meatball. What was my middle one? This is why we didn't say to write it. This is why we write it down. <laughs> um, chicken, meatball, balsamic vinegar. Yes. Broccoli. Broccoli. And then your last pick. Balsamic vinegar. Well, that was his... Last two picks. What was the middle? Fuck. So, uh, uh, no, you said sausage. Because that was the one that you were um, tripped up on. Happens every time. Chicken. Um, mm, meatball. I'm hungry. Oh, uh, uh, is that ricotta. 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 Yeah, there ricotta. it is. Yeah. Out of left field. There she hey, goes again. She, she liked that. the ice machine. She's is that here. like an hourly thing? Because that's like, that's like the, the fourth so, time. Usually, like the ice will like remelt back into the water, <laughs> and then it's just like it's a continuous cycle. It's every, like I think it's every like ten minutes. Mm. Um, I love that thing. It's awesome. It's nice. Yeah. Team fridge for pizza toppings. We got pepperoni, the OG sausage, ham, the meat lover special, buffalo sauce. Toss on some onions for me. Mm. That's a oh, that's a good. You, idea. Like a you could put them all on a pizza, the and it would be delicious. And it would be delicious. I, I would agree with that. Now I kind of want pizza again. Mm-hmm. You ever had Wawa pizza? I keep making Wawa. Oh, I had the personal pie before. It's is, all right. Is it? I never got the full one, though. Is it like classic freaking Pennsylvania pizza, though? Nah, it's, it's shittier. This pizza stinks. It's shittier. 
shittier. Uh, the personal pie, I don't think God, it's man. Just 10 bucks. If you could take good. me to a place around this, this John or whatever y'all can I say this place. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. Anyway, they gave me some good za. North Jersey. I could find you some good. Jersey. I could find a good slice near my place. Where? Uh, I'll drive. I mean, Nona Lisa's is pretty good, but I'll drive. Nona Lisa. See what you said N- yeah, no, I got you. I, I picked Very that creative. up. That was great. Yeah. So, Team my list, Yeah. Uh, we have bacon, mm. sauce on an upside down. Mm-mm. Don't sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, cheese steak, basil, and French fries. Cheese steak is the underrated pick. There. This is yeah. the only draft I've lost. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say ever. It's okay. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great. You're gonna be okay. It's all, I, I will live. I think I wipe. I'm gonna take. A, I'm gonna you take. A, I'm gonna take. A, yeah, I'm gonna take a, a great second second place. I think that's just any reasonable. honorable mentions. I didn't um, hear anybody say olives. You can take third place say, out of three. Well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, I got a third place in this like big draft that I do on my podcast. I don't know how many people were there? Three. Just, just three of us, but it's like, a fault that counts. I got a bronze medal. I still, um, I still placed. Yeah, bar- barbecue, I was on the podium. Barbecue sauce. Big one, great one. That was where I was thinking about taking that with my fifth mm-hmm. pick, but like two sauces. Let me let me, let me reel it back a little yeah. bit. You taking a plain pizza, plain circle round pizza? Or are you taking Sicilian? Uh, definitely round, like New York style. What? It de- it really depends on the place. So you mm-hmm. so there's a place called Bravo's. So I'm talking so far away from the mic. There's a place called Bravo's. Um. Or no, not Bravo's. Rise, Rise is in Brumall. They they make Sicilian mm. pizza, okay. and it's it's called the Rise Pizza. Familiar with Brumall too? I'm surprised I don't know that place. It's very Off Chester good. Pike. Yeah, well, West Chester Pike. West Chester Pike. So yeah, it's, potato it's, potato. It's, yeah, it's potato. You pick you pick that one. Not really, but same, you pick that one up and down. Yeah, it's it's very good. You, mm. I think you would like it if you like a good Sicilian Actually, piece. Yeah, I'll figure it out. We fans of uh, Chicago style here. It's all right. Never had. Wouldn't be an everyday thing, but. I can't say that I've ever like had a true Chicago style either, yeah. but Detroit style pizza is fire. That's like, like super thin crust. Never no, had. it's the thick one. Remember when we went to Goat's Beard with my parents? That's Detroit style that's pizza. Detroit style. Oh, then that's sauce on the top, uh, Parmesan crusted. Mm. It's deep dish. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Shout out to the Goat's Beard. Let's go. Uh, the last shout out that we have to give tonight is to the one and only. Hey, before we get there, any final oh, words? Yeah. It's been an awesome. I mean, no, this is the I mean, new record. I, I, I'm sorry that I took so much of your time, man. I mean, I, I got to apologize. What am, I apologize. What am I, I got to be four hours deep right now. This is the uh, time of our life. This is a new record. Two fifty-two. Two hours. What, and what was the record minutes. before that? Two hours and thirty minutes, and that was oh last week with Seb. So Apo- apologize with to Seb because he wanted to beat the time. He oh, wanted what, to what was the time before Seb's? Like an hour and forty-five. Oh my god, that was we were over two. Hey, when I told you, listen, I could talk to. I told you last night too. I could talk to a wall if I had to. I could talk forever. This was an amazing. This wasn't even like time interviewing you as much as it was a great conversation. Yeah. No, love shooting the shit, guys. Crazily, thank you for having me. As always, you need me. My number away. Of course. Shoot me, shoot me the text. What a guy. Any any shout outs? Parents? <sighs> no. Shout out to any family, friends, teammates, coaches. Shout out to them all. I mean, shout out to them all. You know, shout out to the coaches, the parents, the friends, the you know, y'all. I mean, like, just bring me to where I am today and just grateful for it, man. Just grateful for it. Amen. Amen. Shout out, Jules. We have one last shout out. Drum roll. It is for our favorite artist. We all got to say it. Who's that? Shout out, Jules. Oh. Yeah, shout out, Jules, man. Shout out, Jules. Thank you, everybody. Shout out, Jules. We'll see you guys next time. Hey, yo, what a boy. I'll be up in the club, but I won't come down because I'll be too faded. Everybody want to walk that talk, want to talk that talk like we made it. But they all gon' catch what I got, I'll make the money right back. Bitches be tripping, don't know how to act. He just be singing, don't know how to rap. I really be running this shit like I'm Owen. She like a wave, I'm loving her motion. It's like I'm sipping straight up on the potion. Water be dripping, it feel like and the ocean. I know that I'm different cause I'm from the other side. She's saying that she want me, girl, that's capping, girl, you lie. Everything I ever did, I like to never say it, cause you switched up and you lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had to switch up and you lie. Yeah, I be stargazing. 
I'll be up in the clouds But I won't come down cause I'll be too faded Everybody wanna walk that talk Wanna talk that talk like we made it But they all gon' catch what I got I'll make the money right back Bitches be trippin' don't know how to